95 miles of weed separates Idaho from eastern Washington. The schools share the spotlight, the same newspaper, and a common border. One thing they won't share, the Governor's Cup. Idaho is 4-0 and 5th in the nation, thanks to John L. Smith and his tailback, Sheridan May. Sheridan May's a big bet. You know, we gotta get all 11 guys to him. First guy gets there, you know, second and third guy gets, gotta get there and help him out. This is probably the biggest game of the season right now for us. It's a deciding point. You know, it's either three and two or two and three. You know, Big Sky Championship on the line. Today for Mike Kramer, the game plan is simple. Jason Harrison has to make a, a lot of catches for us uh, in the flat and deep. Uh, we hope to throw the ball at him uh, 16 to 20 times this afternoon. It's Eastern Washington. It's Idaho for 95 miles of wheat and the Governor's Cup. Fields are aglow with sunshine as the number five Idaho Vandals pay a visit on the Eastern Washington Eagles. Hi, everybody. I'm Rich Waltz, along with Arnie Scalio. Welcome to Cheney, Washington. Eastern Washington is 2-2. Two and two. Idaho is 4-0. That's not a surprise that the Vandals are 4-0, but how they've arrived at 4-0, that's the surprise. They have blown out all four opponents. Rich, they have. They're off to a great start. But talking to John L. Smith earlier in the week, he says, hey, we're, we're pretty good, but we've made a ton of mistakes. He does know one thing, though. He's at the top of the Big Sky standings. This is week six of college football. Boise State, Idaho, and Montana right now in the driver's seat. When you look at Eastern Washington, very key game for them. If they lose this one, then they're really out of the title race, but Idaho right where they want to be. It's of line. Ed Simmons has been a hog for a while. Kevin Sargent starting for the Bengals, and Trent Pollard, a rookie, is seeing time with the Bengals. These three players, just as the three quarterbacks from Idaho have set the standard at that position, these three players from the Big Sky have set the standard for offensive linemen. But there's a guy on campus that can accomplish something that that trio has not, and it's Harold Fox. Harold Fox has a chance to become the first uh, player in the Big Sky to win three first-team All-Big Sky awards as an offensive lineman. He is really a character. We'll talk a lot about him in this game. Well, Eastern Washington needs a win to get back into the Big Sky race. Idaho is ranked fifth in the nation. They are 4-0. They need another win to head towards number one. It's a gorgeous day in the Palouse. We're glad you're with us. We'll kick it off from Cheney after this timeout. University, the number five Idaho Vandals against the Eastern Washington Eagles. Series numbers between these two teams. Idaho has dominated. They won last year. The last time Eastern Washington won, 1991 in Moscow in double overtime. As the Eagles get set to take on the Vandals, as we do every week, we let the doctor go to work. Here's Mr. Arnie Scalio. First thing Idaho would like to do is get their running game going. They're very proficient at it. It really enhances their passing game. One of the things the Idaho defense is going to have to deal with today is Jason Anderson, one of the top receivers in the nation. He'll get a lot of balls thrown his way. And finally, a thing that Idaho does very well is they adjust. Coming into a game and at halftime, they will make the necessary changes to have success on both sides of the football. For Eastern Washington, it's a little different. As we've said, Jason Anderson needs to have the ball thrown more his way. He's a very dangerous receiver. Because Idaho is so proficient on the ground, run defense in the front seven for Eastern Washington becomes very important. And the most important thing I feel for the Eagles today, they must maintain contact early. They must not get away from their game plan and be close to Idaho. The Idaho Vandals offensively are a juggernaut right now. They are averaging 590 yards per game. And Arnie, that uh, is one of the reasons why they get off to such a quick start. Eastern Washington will get the football, though, to start this game. Jason Anderson in the middle. Eric Judd to your left. Antonio Morgan also back there. They'd like to get the ball in the hands of Anderson. Remember the opening kickoff of the season? He went 100 yards for a touchdown. But here he's going only six yards before he's blasted at the five-yard line. And great kick coverage by the Idaho Vandals. And on that stop, Montrell Williams. And so Todd Burnett and the Eagles will go to work. Eastern Washington at two and two. They are one and one in the Big Sky Conference. 
Today's lineup is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Flying the low fare airline is just plain smart. Burnett struggled last week. He was sacked eight times and left the game against Portland State with a concussion. David Lewis is his tailback, 76 yards per game in Eastern Washington. On their own seven-yard line, and Burnett goes to the air, to the sideline, a catch by Gerald Jackson. He'll scamper out of bounds, a pickup of about six. The receivers are talented. Anderson's a big play guy. Jackson has speed, Shaw has great hands, and Jesse Hart is one of the premier tight ends in the Big Sky Conference. The offensive line, we've talked about Harold Fox. Last week, though, this offensive line gave up nine sacks in the loss to Portland State. On second and four from the 13, Burnett, there is the tight end, Jesse Hart. He makes the catch, and it's a first down for Eastern Washington. There have been some injuries that have hit the Idaho Vandals. Their defensive line, though, is still intact, and it's a talented one. Barry Mitchell at that defensive end spot is their sack leader. He has five of the Vandals, 15 sacks. Tommy Connect at one linebacker. Dave Longoria starts in the middle. They've lost not only Jason Shelf, but Josh Bennett. Gunn and West are the corners. Hill and Smith are the safeties. It's first and 10 Eastern. At their own 21, fumble, loose ball, and Idaho might just have it. David Lewis coughed it up and looks like he got it back. So the Eagles take it back. And Arnie, any time you turn the ball over against Idaho, that is a mistake. The Vandals have forced 13 turnovers, and they've turned them into 13 scores this year. It looks like Lewis never had the handle on the ball, but Harold Fox, who we talked quite a bit about in our open, uh, was right there to uh, keep the ball away from Idaho. A big break early for Eastern Washington. Second down and 10. Burnett with time. Anderson the catch, and he's out of bounds. Coverage by Cedric West, the senior. One thing that Burnett did last week, they felt, the Eastern coaches felt, that with the pressure he got from Portland State, he tried to force the ball, especially over the middle. And you can see today, working the outside very well from deep in his own territory, very high percentage passes, very uh, quick drops and quick throws, but Eastern Washington very slowly moving out of their own end. It's a two tight end set. Now Tim Hunsaker lines up as a fullback in front of Lewis. On third down and three from the 27. Opening drive of this football game. Here comes the blitz. Burnett going deep for Gerald Jackson, who's got the catch near midfield. He's out at the 47-yard line. Jumping Gerald Jackson, the sophomore out of Seattle. Interesting call by Eastern Washington with a two-back formation. You'd expect a running play, but it's a three-step drop, and all of a sudden, Idaho is in man coverage. Arnold Gunn, number 23 over there for Idaho from his cornerback position. Can't get to the football. A nice throw by Burnett. He lays it out, and Jackson makes a nice grab, and the Eagles are on the move. At their own 47, they started the drive from their own seven. And there's Hunsaker again shifting into that fullback spot. Eastern traditionally has run a one-back set. It's a two-back set, and Lewis has a nice game as he bursts across midfield down to the Vandal 47-yard line. It's a pickup of six, and that's one thing Eastern Washington did not do last week, Arnie, that they've done most of the season. That's run the football. Rich, Eastern has been known as a running football team, but coming into this game, they're only averaging about 85 yards a game. That's because of the type of games they've been in. If the defense stacks you up front, you throw the football. But right here, they get a good pop off the left side, a nice push by the center, number 73, Kevin Peterson, and the left guard there, T.J. Ewing. And again, Eastern in a two-back set, on second down and four. Lewis again, off tackle this time, and this time he's met by Ryan Phillips, the sophomore out of Auburn, Washington. Boy, and what a game that defensive front for Idaho had last week against Idaho State, and there's one of the reasons why number 96, Ryan Phillips, already this season has 14 quarterback pressures. He's the only starting uh, player back off that front, but you can see he plays the run very well, very strong, and uh, they make a lot of comparisons to Ryan Phillips to Jeff Robinson, who's playing on Sundays. We'll talk more about that later. With the Denver Broncos. Third down and four. Again to the sidelines for Morgan, and it's incomplete. And the Eastern Washington drive now stalls around midfield. Cedric Weston coverage against Antonio Morgan. 
But the thing I've been impressed with so far is how Eastern Washington has been protecting their quarterback. They're doing some quick things, but uh, looks like they're going to come out of a drive right now. But you can see what Eastern wants to do, get that uh, confidence established with Todd Brunetti. Tom Zerflew to punt it away. He's a freshman. They feel he's getting better and better each week. And Kyle Gary is deep for the Idaho Vandals. It's a windy day here in Cheney. And a good roll for Eastern Washington in a tremendous play. A flag is down back at the 15-yard line. Rich, you're going to see first touching at about the 15 or 16-yard uh -huh. line. That's where the ball is going to come back to. So not a penalty, but more of a marker of where the ball was touched. Antonio Morgan down there on the coverage. The Idaho Vandals, as they touch the football, Eric Heisaw, the junior quarterback, and Sheridan May has written just about every record book, uh, every record in the book for Idaho. He has 55 career touchdowns. That is five short of the one AA career record. The absence of Keith Neal. Neal injured his knee earlier this week in practice, so he's not there. Gary is the big play guy. He has five touchdowns and 27 catches. This was, as John L. Smith told me this week, Arnie, the Idaho offensive line was more of a concern than his quarterback spot coming into the year, but he's been very pleased with the work of his front five. Well, they've really done a nice job, and uh, at the left tackle there, Spencer Folau, he's playing on a bad right knee. It'll be interesting to see how far he can go in this game. But uh, Jay Lukes and Eric Johnson, uh, who are really the uh, solid folks of that uh, offensive front, they do a real nice job. There's a look at Sheridan May. May averaging 126 yards per game and has scored four touchdowns this year. The Vandal offense, numbers-wise, staggering. They're averaging almost 55 points per game. That is second in the nation. 590 yards per game. That leads the nation. Rich, what's really incredible about them is the balance. 274 rushing and 316 passing. I saw from his own 16, Sheridan May with the football. And a nice pickup as he's out close to the 23-yard line. Sheridan May out of Tacoma. He is a senior. The defense that this Idaho team will work against today, a front four that's very speedy and very talented. 14 sacks, Rob Arano, the sack leader, he has six. A trio of linebackers, very, very tough, especially against the run. Tim Scott in the middle, Evan Brady and Alexander on the outside. LeVon Major and Troy Turner are the corners. Brown and Moore are the safeties. It was a gain of seven, it's second and three. Idaho on their initial drive or scoreless. There's the play action you talked about. Heisaw is a good scrambler. He'll go deep, looking for Dwight McKenzie incomplete, and will bring up a third down. That may be one element that Heisaw brings to the table that maybe Nussmeyer didn't have, and that's maybe a, a little more mobility in the pocket. Well, they both obviously could run around pretty good, but Eric Heisaw is averaging about 48 yards a game rushing. I saw a good example there of what a good job the defense for Eastern Washington did. That front seven really playing in their solid secondary was with the receivers, and then finally Heisaw tried to go vertical with it and out through his man, but credit the defense that time because Heisaw really had nowhere to go, and Eastern dropped back and did a good job in coverage. Eric Heisaw grew up five minutes from this stadium. He went to Cheney High School and ended up an Idaho Vandal. Third down and three. Heisaw in trouble. He escapes Arano. He'll get rid of it. And I think he stepped out of bounds before he threw the pass. It's incomplete, but it will bring the ball back further behind the line of scrimmage. Eastern Washington coming with a full blitz here and catch the end of the play. Heisaw gets clutch, watch the foot. Excellent call by the officials. He was on the sideline before the pass was thrown. And Eastern Washington for Coach Mike Kramer has gotten exactly what he wanted, a good start to this football game. There have been no touchdowns, and, and position of the field has changed. Eddie Howard into punt. That is the first time all year long that Idaho has not scored on an opening possession. Howard is a senior. A low-line drive kick. LeVon Major will scoop it up. And Eastern Washington will have excellent field position at their 44-yard line. It's a gorgeous day on the Palouse 
They have gathered in Cheney, Washington to decide the Governor's Cup. Eastern Washington and Idaho scoreless. Idaho scoreless. This was an adventurous punch for Eddie Howard. Rich, watch right here. Watch the center right here. Now watch the snap to Eddie Howard. Good. Todd didn't run it. Now watch what Howard does. He didn't run it, Todd. Had Eastern's defense not turned away, could have been a huge play, huge turnaround. But as it is, uh, Howard gets it out. Eastern Washington at their own 44-yard line now. Both teams have touched the football. Burnett to the sideline, wide open as Anderson makes the catch. And he's out of bounds at the 38-yard line. Artie, in talking to Mike Kramer, he said Eastern had trouble throwing the ball over the middle against Portland State, so I guess it is no surprise most of the passing that Burnett has done has been to the sidelines well, today. It has, and they're giving Idaho some different looks. Now this is off a rollout, and you can see the cushion that number 23, Arnold Gunn of Idaho, is given Jason Anderson. I mean, it looked like Anderson was going up vertical up the field, and then he broke back to the football and had about a 10-yard cushion. David Lewis bounces outside. He runs into Ryan Phillips along with Dave Longoria, the junior linebacker. Rich, what we haven't talked too much about is both the rush defenses of both Idaho and Eastern Washington as an Idaho player is down. But uh, Eastern Washington was leading the big sky and allowing uh, oh, just about 60 or 70 yards a game uh, coming into this one, actually 49 yards a game. And Idaho uh, was fifth in the nation. Uh, allowing only 63 yards a game. So both these teams very stingy against the run. Passing, though, different story. Rich Waltz and Arnie Scalio with you. There's a timeout on the field. We'll take one also. Eastern and Idaho scoreless. Four minutes in to the Governor's Cup. Arnold Gunn, the freshman corner from Portland, is on the sideline, and here's what happened to Gunn, who comes into your picture late. Okay, watch his left knee there. It gets buckled under, and the pile comes down on top of him, and uh, we hope Gunn isn't too seriously injured. We'll have to keep uh, you updated on that. In his place is Montrell Williams. They go right to Hart, who makes the catch, and Jesse Hart is down to the six-yard line. Sideline, 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 and then boom, right over the middle. The Eagles found a seam in Idaho's defense, and it was Jesse Hart just running straight up the football field. Take a look on the left side of your screen, as again, Todd Burnett gets good protection on this drop and delivers it right on the money. As you can see, Hart settled into a seam, and Idaho has to adjust. Idaho already going at Tommy James in the secondary, who replaced Arnold Gunn. Montrell Williams also there. Torsey Smith is in at quarterback. He'll give to David Lewis, who's hit, lost the football, but it will be marked down at the six-yard line. This is something that Eastern Washington has done all year long, and a lot last year. Torsey Smith, their backup quarterback, once they get inside the 10, they bring him in and feel he's a much better runner. And you, you may start seeing some speed option, those kinds of things, and it, it really gives the offense another dimension. But it's got to be tough for Torrey Smith in this situation, really been on the bench the whole first quarter, and coming in now having to direct the offense. He has been effective in this situation, although remember that fumble against Montana opening weekend of the season. A three tight end set. Play clock is down to two, and Smith's going to put it up with time to the corner. Incomplete. And now on third down and six, I would expect you'll see Todd Burnett back in the football game. Steve Matson, the intended receiver, the freshman out of Nacelle. It was a good throw by Torrison Smith. It was really a jump ball. Matson was being covered by Jeff Hill for free safety, and uh, Smith made a wise choice to throw the ball high, try to avoid the interception, but also give his tight end a chance to run underneath him. No score in the football game. We're almost midway through the first quarter. Eastern Washington, first and goal from their six. Nick Shaw can't hold on, it's incomplete. And Eastern Washington will look for three points. Just a quick slant pattern. Watch to the right of your screen. Burnett delivers it a little high, but certainly a catchable pass by Shaw. 
And a great play by Derek Smith, the junior safety. See, Shaw hasn't beat to the inside of the post, just a little bit high. And the Eagles don't convert. Here's Zerflu now for a 23-yarder, which is blocked. And the Idaho Vandals have held on the football Tommy Connect, and I'm not sure who blocked this, but the Vandals on a low kick blocked the Zerflu field goal. We're still scoreless from Cheney. Washington trying to put points on the board. This a 23-yard attempt. Looks like a good snap, a good placement. And the ball is just low. And from the outside, it was Montrell Williams making the block. Big play for the Idaho defense. And Eastern Washington really had it rolling offensively. Williams, who came into the ball game for the injured Arnold Gunn. And here's Hysaw giving to Sheridan May, who bounces it outside. Sheridan May from behind and brought down at the 24-yard line. On the stop, Lee Brown, the senior out of Sacramento. There's May and his number so far this year. That just tells the start of the story. He has had a storybook career, and he started his career at Idaho as a safety. And he scored two touchdowns off pass interceptions as a safety, so scoring, uh, making touchdowns for Sheridan sure May is, uh, is nothing new. I mean, he does a lot of that. He trails Charvez Fulger, Another old Big Sky alum, Joel Thomas. Out close to the 30-yard line. Well, I tell you, what a, what a nice combination of running backs that Idaho has. You talk about Joel Thomas and Sheridan May, both really, uh, you'd call them blunt runners north and south, but also have pretty good speed and strength to, to do some things. But this front seven of Eastern Washington will really be tested today, especially against the run. This is real key, this series, I think, because Idaho has had some success, some success in the last couple of plays and running the football. You can see Thomas is split out. It's a four-receiver set. No one behind Hysaw on second and six from his own 30. With time over the middle, and it's Kyle Gary with a catch. He lost the football. Eastern Washington has it. Penalty flag is down back at the 30-yard line. Kyle Gary, the leading receiver for Idaho, lost it, and Tim Scott came up with a football. Here's the call. Procedure for the offense. Decline. Here's the look. See, let's see if we can see how the ball comes out here. No back attack and a, a quick five-step drop. You can see the receiver settling in. Nice catch on the football. Now watch what happens here. It's kind of loose before he makes his cut. And that was Kyle Gary, Craig Steinmetzer. Looked like he knocked it out. Here's another view. Let's watch Gary. There's the ball is loose. He's trying to tuck it away. Steinmetzer, really great hustle getting back into the play. And Tim Scott, as you called, Rich, comes up with a big fumble recovery. John L. Smith in his sixth year. Todd Burnett now taking over. He's had quite a day so far in Eastern Washington's field position. The best yet at the Idaho 39. David Lewis. A gain of about four. See, one of the changes here early in the game, we talked about it uh, earlier. Eastern Washington going with a two-back set, so showing some different looks. They're normally a one-back team. And David Lewis uh, certainly getting a tough yardage inside. Movement on the interior line on second down and six. Probably will turn it in to second down and 11. Again, if you just joined us, this is the Governor's Cup, Eastern Washington, and Idaho. The Vandals are without two of their better linebackers. Jason Schelt is out for the season, suffered a knee injury, but earlier this week, Josh Fetter, who was a replacement for Schelt, is out with broken ribs, and so guys like Avery Slaughter and Dave Longoria, backup linebackers, are going to play an awful lot for Idaho today. And now with Arnold Gunn down in the secondary for Idaho, they're uh, getting a little thin back there. Certainly John L. Smith's got to be 
concerned about depth. It is second and 11, and this pass is overthrown. Burnett looking for Jason Anderson, his favorite targets. On the coverage was Cedric West. Mike Kramer wasn't kidding when he said, we want to throw the football to Jason Anderson maybe 16 times in this football game. They really want to get him the football. Rich, last week, uh, he did not have... Uh, a good day catching the football he was uh, it was shut out and coach kramer told us earlier in the week he says hey that's not a good job coaching we have to figure out a way to get jason anderson the football let's see if they try to go to him here from the idaho 40. burnett to the big man hardy makes another catch jesse hart trying to get to the end zone he's down at the five yard line and Eastern Washington will have first and goal. For the second time today, Todd Burnett has hit his big tight end, Jesse Hart, for a sizable game. The Eastern tight ends are very athletic. They catch the ball quite well. Eastern Washington had three wide receivers to the left of your screen. Now Hart is just going straight up, and you can see that he's beat Tommy Connect, who had him one-on-one -on -one in coverage. Now the defense, Jeff Hill from his free safety spot, comes back in. Football came out, but they ruled he was down. In Eastern Washington, again, deep in Idaho territory. And back in is Torsey Smith. Jason Patrick gets the football, and he fights his way down to the three-yard line, and it's a surprise that he didn't get into the end zone. You can see him in the middle of your picture there. Number 22, Jason Patrick. He now has nine career carries and six touchdowns. That's, that's not a bad percentage. And four of those touchdowns, I believe, are against the University of Montana. It was a gain of one. It is second and goal from the three. No score in this football game. Smith at quarterback. Lewis and Patrick, the setback. That is Hart in motion. Smith on a rollout. He's got good speed, trying to get to the flag. He gets there! Touchdown, Eastern Washington! Oh! Torrey Smith reached the football out, and he just got to the corner of the end zone. Ryan Phillips was in a foot race. Yeah, Ryan Phillips did a nice job in cutting the angle. Let's take an end zone look and watch to the left of your screen. You can see Ryan Phillips trying to get there, but now this is just an athletic move. Torsey Smith gets the ball inside the flag. Zerflu with the kick. He missed a field goal and he misses an extra point. And so Eastern Washington who takes the football 40 yards, finishes with Torrey Smith's three-yard run. Eastern on the board first in the Governor's Cup. He comes into the football game when Eastern's inside the 10-yard line. At that time, he takes it from three yards out. A nice scoring drive. The big play, of course, Todd Burnett to Jesse Hart, which took it down to the five-yard line. And the Eagles cashing in on a turnover. And we've seen Idaho do that a lot this year, but the Eagles uh, get started early that way. It is a high kick that will land in the arms of Montrell Williams. And he's down to the 24-yard line. And there's an injured Eagle on the field right now. It looks like Jason Patrick. This could be a tough day for kickers, Arnie, because there's a crosswind going right now of about 10 miles an hour. And in watching it in warm-ups, both Rich, the punters and the place kickers were having some difficulties. Rich, that's a live ball in a kickoff, too. Idaho could have called a fair catch on that, but once the ball hits the ground, it is a live ball. Let's, let's take a look at this one. I'm not sure if this was by design, but the kick was up there pretty high. We're watching the return here. And I'm not sure we can see Jason Anderson in that one. Watch down number 23 to the bottom of your screen to the left now. Oh, excuse me, 22 we were looking at. Let's see if we can see where the 
injury might take place, but uh, Jason Patrick obviously in a lot of pain. And a guy that Eastern Washington depends on, not only for his play on special teams, but as we, we've seen, he comes in and in short yardage situations and especially in goal line situations. All right, tell me what's going on in, on the Idaho sideline. What is John L. Smith thinking right now? His, his offense has been stopped twice, and that's not something that has happened much this year, having his offense stopped. Well, I think, Rich, what John L. is probably telling him there is let's hang on to the football because that drive uh, that they lost the football on the last drive was that they were running the football pretty good, had just completed a pass for about a 10-yard game, and the ball gets knocked down. But I think, you know, I think the Vandals will be uh, staying with their game plan. Things have uh, not gone all the, the way he has wanted it to right now, but uh, certainly they can uh, stay within the game plan. It's still very early in this game. Five years at Idaho, two Big Sky titles, four times to the 1AA playoffs. Coming up on Jins and the Beavers will go live at 3.30. And later on tonight, you'll see a, a great matchup, the Oregon Ducks and the Washington State Cougars. That'll be delayed tonight at 8 o'clock. Let's see if we can uh, find out exactly what happened to Jason Patrick. Obviously, he's looking at that left knee. Okay, watch over to the right of your screen. You can see the hit right there on Patrick. Mm. You could see right was right was right down, and I'm not sure if um, he got a, a cleat caught, but it looks like they're working on his left knee or ankle. A tough break for Eastern Washington. All right, here come the Vandals now. Behind in this football game, six to nothing. Eric Heisaw gives to Sheridan May. Bounces off a tackle, bounces off another, and he leaves a, a wake of red bodies on the ground. He stays on his feet and he's out of bounds with a gain of about seven yards. We can see how quick Sheridan May is to the hole. Little little cross block there by the offensive front by Idaho. And May is, is through there quite quickly. Weak guard Jay Luke's number 67 pulled out very quick and Sheridan May is so effective in that situation. You give him a little bit of a seam, he gets those shoulder pads through and he's tough to bring down. Vandals at their own 30, May again, and this time he runs into Evan Brady, the senior out of Yakima. It'll bring up third down and short. There's a look at Brady, the linebackers for Eastern Washington. Very, very solid. You keep talking about it with good reason. The front seven for both teams, and especially Eastern. Well, the Eagles, uh, very athletic there. Their, their front four, especially. But Evan Brady uh, was a defensive back coming into Eastern Washington, and they, they didn't like his foot speed in that position. And they said, hey, put on 20 pounds. Let's make you a linebacker. Have that linebacker mentality. And he did a lot of work in the offseason in the early days and came back as one really one of the, the really good players on the defensive side of the football in the big sky. You know, Brady weighs 218 pounds. And to keep the weight on, one of the things the coaches have done here at Eastern, Mike Kramer included, was forbid Brady from playing basketball. He loved to play pickup basketball. He would play three or four times a week. And Mike Kramer said, all right, Evan, I'll let you play basketball once a week. But there's three or four times, uh-uh. And, and it's helped Brady keep some weight on. He's listed at 218. He's six foot three. Yeah, he said his goal was to be six seven and, and jump through the ceiling and, uh, and play some hoop. But uh, certainly they're glad he's on that Eagle defense because he's around the football an awful lot. Third down and very short. Eric Heisaw. The junior led Cheney High School to a state championship three or four years ago, and he's returned to town as the quarterback of the Vandals. He'll give to May, who has the first down. He stretches out to about the 35-yard line. And so the Vandals move the sticks. And they'll be looking at first down and 10. Well, that was just power football by Idaho. Seven defenders up front for Eastern Washington lining up. And Idaho says, okay, here it is. We're going to run it out. You see Sheridan May talking to the offensive coordinator of Idaho, Art Valero. Former player at Boise State, played on the Broncos national championship team of 1980. I saw it to the air. And he's going to scramble now. Oh, looks like he... Might have turned an ankle or tripped over something. He goes down and he's hurt. Eric Heisaw scrambling away at the 34-yard line. 
And we've seen now three players go down. Hysaw was not hit, Arnie. He was all by himself. Let's see if we can if we can pick it up here. You can see Craig Steinmetzer flushing Hysaw out of the pocket. And now it, it's kind of a foot race here. And I'm not sure if it was his left or right ankle. It looked like his right ankle. Or it could have been a hamstring. We're not really sure. Obviously, uh, Eric Hysaw in, in quite a bit of pain. Here's another look from the end zone. See, let's see if we can watch his feet, see if we can pick it up. It might have been a hamstring injury. Huh. It, it might have been a hamstring injury. It looked like it didn't look like his ankles rolled or anything like that. But uh, Barry Steele, the trainer, working on Eric Heisaw. There's Brian Brennan of the Saints, but they've always had an opportunity to bring those players along and let them get acclimated in the system, as Heisaw has done now. But Brennan, a freshman, will be thrust into this football game, and things don't look good for Eric Heisaw. John L. Smith has seen a, a bunch of injuries. It's a tough week for Idaho this week. This week and this game. So Brennan, the freshman, will give to May the senior. And Sheridan Mays out across the 40-yard line. And he's out to the 42. And I would expect with a freshman quarterback in, they're going to try to keep the football in the arms of Sheridan May. In Eastern Washington defense, you, you can see the good blocking up front, a big hole. But watch the football. Watch what's going on right here. And, and the football was, was just about on the backside. Eastern Washington trying to get there. Third down and two. Brennan gives to May. He's got the first down and more. Bounces outside, and he's caught from behind by Lee Brown. Check it. It's Joel Thomas. So Thomas spelling May has the first down. You can see Idaho blocking down the line and a good cutback by Joel Thomas. But what really made this play go was a block right there by number 15, one of the wide receivers for Idaho, Dwight McKenzie. And uh, Joel Thomas was just about a step away from breaking it for a long run. A two tight end set for the Vandals, and Sheridan May is back in the football game. Has it now, and he's blasted at the 48-yard line. Troy Alexander making the stop. Alexander from his right tackle position is uh, Idaho trying to get Brennan into the, into the flow of the game. Three straight running plays trying to get him to get a feel. You can see that uh, Sheridan May now second career leading rusher at the University of Idaho, passing the great Ray McDonald. May lining up as a wide receiver now in a four receiver set. Brian Brennan is the quarterback. 6 nothing. Eastern on top. Brennan's in trouble. Escapes one man and stumbles down to the 45-yard line. And he had Craig Steinmetzer landing on him when he came to earth. You know, Rich, talking earlier in the week to Mike Kramer, he thought that Eastern Washington would need to be pretty basic in its approach with Idaho this week, just to play good, basic, sound defense, not blitz a heck of a lot. We've seen a couple of blitzes, and I think with a new quarterback in there now for Idaho, you may see Eastern Washington start to gamble a little more. And now a third down and eight. So an obvious passing situation for the freshman. He'll put it up. It's caught for a first down at the 34-yard line. Dimitri, but now check it, it's Dwight McKinsey who made the catch. McKinsey on the sideline. He's out at the 34, LeVon Major on the coverage. Let's take a look at the uh, no play fake. You can see Brennan looking to the right, all of a sudden comes back to the left. A little wobbly, but gets the ball there. And not bad coverage, but a good throw. Got to be a confidence builder to get that first one in there. And Idaho continues with their drive. Joel Thomas. Not much going. Hit by Troy Alexander again. Ron Braxton also in there from his tackle spot. But Eastern Washington really doing a good job of getting off the ball a little bit. 
Watch down to the right side of your screen. You can see that uh, Troy Alexander comes in and Braxton helps out, but Alexander did a nice job fighting off the block from the opposite side of the line and rolling down into the play. Had a big game last week, 14 tackles against Portland State. Brennan to the air, and it's intercepted! Evan Brady! Gary chases him out of bounds! Evan Brady with the interception, and Eastern Washington will have the football in Idaho territory. And the freshman, the redshirt freshman, Brian Brennan, Trying to get the football to the outside, Brady stepped in front. Brennan would like, obviously, to have this throw back, but you can see that Evan Brady is reading the quarterback's eyes all the way and is right there in coverage. Now it's a catch-up for Kyle Gary to make the play. But watch to the left side of the screen. Just a pass, obviously, that Brennan would love to have back, but Evan Brady... Makes a lot of big plays in this defense, does it again. Now Burnett to the air. Anderson with the catch, and he's out of bounds. 28-yard return on that interception for Evan Brady. Todd Burnett has been effective. We're under a minute left in the first quarter. Eastern Washington leads Idaho. 6-0. Jesse Hart flanks out. Blitz coming. They get it to Hart. Is down at the 26-yard line. The clock continues to roll, and Eastern Washington has a first down. The Eagles doing a good job with their tight ends. They're drawing one-on-one -on -one coverage with the free safety. Hart's locked up with Jesse Hill, or Jeff Hill, excuse me, the free safety from Idaho. Good pass. Hill playing off a few yards. And you can see what uh, Eastern was doing with with Hart bringing him away from the formation, splitting him out, locked up one and one. From the Vandal 26 now, on first down and 10. Wade snap. And it will cost someone five yards. If you have just joined us, Eastern Washington leads six to nothing. The Vandals of Idaho have suffered a pair of injuries procedure against Eastern Washington. Arnold Gunn, their starting freshman corner, has gone out with a knee injury. Their starting quarterback, Eric Heisaw, with a leg injury of some sort. We don't have any indication yet. Hardest four catches for 83 yards. Eastern Washington has lost their reserve fullback, Jason Patrick. Here comes the blitz. Burnett on first and 15. Steps inside, stays on his feet, throws the football, and almost threw it away. He almost threw it in the hands of Tim Wilson, the freshman out of Seattle. Vandals coming with a pressure package that time. Tim Burnett did get out of it. Watch off to the left side of your screen. You can see pressure coming from the corner, but Burnett sidesteps it. That was Duke Garrett. And then uh, Tim Wilson almost comes up with the football for Idaho. Nine of 13. Really the first time that Burnett has seen a lot of pressure. Remember, he was sacked eight times last week. On second and 15. The Vandals not known as a blitzing team. Lewis... Over left tackle, Jeff Hill there to make the stop for the Vandals, along with Dave Longoria. And it will bring up third down and long when we get back, because the first quarter is history. The Governor's Cup on a sunny day in the wheat fields of Eastern Washington. John L. Smith and the Idaho Vandals trailing Eastern Washington 6-0. Now the Wellington, Eastern Washington, a bit of a surprise right now on top of the Idaho Vandals by a score of 6 nothing. There is Eric Heisaw, and when a quarterback takes off his shoulder pads, Arnie Scalio, that means he's done for the day. Heisaw looks like a right knee that they were looking at and have wrapped in ice. Which is something you hate to see in injuries of any kind. And, uh, certainly a, a tough... Uh, 
tough one for the University of Idaho to take a look at the first quarter stats, but it's been all Eastern Washington, although they only have six points to show for it. But look at the passing yards. With the football, the Vandal 27. Third down and 11. Here comes the safety blitz. Burnett stands tall. Hart's got it at the five. Touchdown, Eastern Washington. Rich, we're talking about a lot about Jason Anderson, but Idaho has had trouble picking up Jesse Hart in pass coverage. He was all alone on Tommy Connect, the strong side linebacker, and just beat him to the post, and Burnett laid it out there perfectly. Let's take a look. Watch up to the right of your screen. See it right in the middle here. And Jesse Hart is all alone. The Eagles picked up the blitz and got the throw they wanted on the post. Now they got to go for two. We'll take a timeout. Eastern will go for two when we're back. Boise king on the middle. Rich, one of the big keys is right here. Watch the block right in here. Okay, Todd, go ahead and roll it. Watch what happens, David Lewis, let's stop it right there, right here. David Lewis steps up and makes the block. Now it's open. Eastern Washington going for two, and they don't make it. So Burnett, who was looking for Nick Shaw, overthrew him. A 27-yard pass, Todd Burnett to Jesse Hartz. The scoring drive, five plays, 41 yards. And now Hart with five catches, 110 yards, and both Eastern Washington touchdowns have come off Idaho turnovers. Tim Scott's fumble recovery and Evan Brady's interception setting up the scores. Okay, we're trying to diagram for you the last play. Watch right here, again, that is David Lewis right here. Watch what he'll do. He'll step right into here and pick up the blitz. Let's stop it right there, Todd. You can see right there, that is just a, a big key block. Now, it, it buys enough time for Burnett, and although Lewis really takes a hit, Burnett can find Jesse Hart open on the post, and it's an easy throw and catch. Eastern Washington now up by a couple of scores, and remember the Eagles had a field goal block also, a 23-yard field goal block. They, that's a, a potential of five points that's gone by the wayside that missed a pair of extra points and that field goal. And Rich, we talked about coming into the game that Idaho had converted on 13 straight turnovers for either touchdowns or field goals, 83 points worth, and nine touchdowns off of nine straight turnovers in the last two games. But so far, Eastern Washington is using that page out of the Vandal playbook. They're two for two. Trail Williams at the 11, and he's caught from behind. A good play on the special teams by Spencer Richardson of Eastern Washington, along with Doug Dorton. You know, Rich, statistically coming into this game, this was one of the only weaknesses offensively that Idaho had was on the kick return team, only averaging about 14 yards per return. But to be real honest, not too many people have scored against Idaho this year, so they haven't had a lot of practice doing it. There's the redshirt freshman, Brian Brennan. Eric Hysaw apparently out for the football game with a leg injury. So Brennan has taken over. And Idaho's in a big hole right now. Down 12-0, Sheridan May is hit and dropped. Rob Arano, the senior out of Spokane, who is the sack leader for this Eastern team, makes the stop. You can see Idaho going to try to be conservative down in here. Now watch the front. See the handoff there. Now watch Steinmetzer get in, make initial contact. May gets away from that, but Craig gets a little help from his friends to borrow the old uh, song title. Rob Arano puts the finishing touches on Sheridan May. Not too many guys... Uh, get to Sheridan May the first time. There's a graphic we were talking about at the kickoff returns. And it's a certainly hurt Idaho today. Brennan wants a timeout. And so the redshirt freshman thrust into the fire. He's thrown an interception and now he's maybe a little bit of confusion on the sidelines. And he'll talk it over with John L. Smith. He certainly has a red shirt freshman getting some real valuable experience today. 
Idaho keeps it on the ground. Sheridan May. He's close to the first down. He'll be short. It's third down and about two. Well, it's just incredible with the, the kind of momentum that Sheridan May gets going as the, the pile just moves along. Watch down to the right side of your screen. A little draw play to May. And he, he just picks up a nice block there from Jay Lukes, and the pile just keeps moving forward. And what looks like maybe a two or three yard gain becomes an eight or nine yard gain. About close to the first down. Third down and two. Brennan play action over the middle. Kyle Gary with a catch. Can he beat his man? No! He's dragged down from behind. Ryan Moore got a hand on him. And it saved a touchdown. Kyle Gary from Brian Brennan. And the Idaho Vandals have their best field position of the ball game. Good high percentage pass. There's the play fake. Just a quick slant over the middle. And Kyle Gary... One of the outstanding receivers in the big sky and in all of one double-A football. Now it's a foot race. You can see Ryan Moore just gets him by the jersey. <laughs> and it's just by a couple of fingers. If he doesn't, Kyle Gary is gone. We have not talked much about Kyle Gary, but certainly one of the outstanding receivers, not only in the big sky, but around one double-A football. Joel Thomas with the carry. Troy Alexander hits him immediately. It'll be a gain of maybe a yard now for the Vandals. Busy day for Mr. Alexander, the senior out of Edmonton, Alberta. He's coming off the field as uh, Eastern Washington will rotate their down front people quite a bit. But certainly Troy Alexander has really benefited from the play of Craig Steinmetzer. And Steinmetzer really uh, creates a lot of opportunities because he's occupying sometimes two people on the double team. So the rest of that defensive front will make some, uh, make some plays. Brennan to the air again, and this one is in and out of the hand practice this week with Keith Neal, but he's okay. He's on the sideline. He's not dressed for the game. I understand he is here, but uh, he is out for an undetermined amount of time. Third down now. Brennan, there's the catch by McKinsey. His knee goes down just inside the 30, and it will be fourth down in about two or three. You can see what Idaho's trying to do after the interception that Brennan threw in the last series. You can see the receivers going underneath. They're going with the short patterns, but Eastern Washington has it fairly well defense, and McKinsey goes down. Mike Kramer, who was a lineman at Idaho back in the 70s. Ryan Wolverton is in to attempt a field goal. And Eastern Washington will take a timeout. And so Wolverton, who has good range, will try to put the Vandals on the scoreboard. Eastern Washington leads Idaho in the coverage. Walt Johnny Scalio back at Woodward Stadium on the campus of Eastern Washington University. Ryan Wolverton, a 47-yard field goal. He has connected from 51 and 52. A little bit of a crosswind. Blowing from his right to his left. Go, baby! Go, baby! And he hooked it. Both teams have missed field goals. And Eastern Washington will get the football back. At their own 30-yard line, John L. Smith. Let's watch along with him. Well, some days, uh, some days a diamond, some days a stone. I guess the old saying. But uh, wind is blowing a little bit crossways, as you mentioned. There's your comparison. Oh, Burnett has enjoyed a, a great day, and Todd Burnett uh, off to a great, great start today. Outstanding quarterback. David Lewis straight ahead out to the 32 yard line right behind the escorts of Harold Fox Fox the right guard who's described as a brawler there's a good shot of Fox with a nice block on Duke Garrett it's a little running room for David Lewis Certainly the yardage pretty tough. We'll talk a little bit more about Harold Fox. He really is a character. Had some great things to say in an article that Mike Sandow, the spokesman review. Really On second and seven, Burnett going deep for Anderson. Just out of his reach. Working on Montrell Williams. And there's another area 
working against the junior who came in for the injured Arnold Gunn. All right, Harold Fox. Another top pro prospect as an offensive lineman from Eastern Washington. He was moved from the defensive line to the offensive line, and there's what he had to say. The fat kids go to the offensive line, the fast ones stay on the defensive line, and according to Harold Fox, he's got the body fit. Two-time first-team All-Big Sky pick, trying to become the first lineman ever to be a three-time first-team pick. Now it's third down and seven, and Burnett with plenty of time airing it out for Anderson. Montrell Williams is there with great coverage. He comes down with the football, but he's out of bounds. Idaho dropped into a prevent defense, only rush three, and Burnett to try to go for a jump ball situation here. Why not with Jason Anderson? Good coverage by Idaho secondary. Let's see where he comes down. Oh, I think that Idaho uh, may have intercepted that pass. It looked like he was in bounds. Watch the, watch the foot there. He did. And uh, he may have been a question of possession, but uh, certainly his foot was down. So Eastern Washington may have gotten a break on that play. The Vandals probably will get the football in, in relatively the same field position, though. <laughs> As Williams came down with the football at the Idaho 30, and this punt will carry back to the Vandal 25. Kyle Gary reverses his field. He's got a few blockers over there. There goes Kyle Gary to the 44-yard line. Nicely done. And the Vandals have another opportunity. Good field position for Idaho. Eastern Washington on top of the Vandals on Prime Sports. And on top, Vandals have good field position thanks to some nice special teams work. It looks like the punt return is going to come out here, but all of a sudden, change the field and go the other way. Get roll it, Todd. He picks up some blockers along the way. Nice return by the Vandals. Brennan over the middle, David Griffin with the football. And he's to the 31-yard line. So Brian Brennan finding David Griffin. A freshman to a sophomore, and the Vandals are now down to the Eastern Washington 31-yard line, and it looks like the freshman is getting a little more comfortable with each snap of the football. And again, short, high percentage passes. Idaho doing a good job finding some seams back there in the Eastern defense and building the confidence of this young quarterback. Sheridan May caught from behind. May got loose and Rob Arano making the stop. May was loose a couple times early in the football game, but Eastern Washington has kept him in check since. Yeah, Sheridan May's found the running going a little tough. But certainly he's capable of breaking one open at any time. He's been need a lot to do that. He has been over 100 yards in all four Idaho games this year. Brennan again to the air. This time he's caught. Jason Martin out of Dayton, Washington, there to stop him. Martin with his third quarterback sack of the season. And we talked. We've talked about that Eastern Washington front four. Watch off to the left of your screen, or excuse me, to the right of your screen. You can see Martin getting loose. And things close down quickly for Brennan. A look at Martin. Eastern Washington's defensive line is not big, but they are very, very quick. And Rich, this is not the situation that John L. Smith wants to see his young quarterback in. Third and long. They'll keep it on the ground. Joel Thomas hit by LaVon Major and brought down at the 30-yard line. And we'll see again if Ryan Wolverton will come off the sidelines and attempts another long field goal. Idaho just trying to get enough to get Wolverton in that field goal range. And certainly this is within his range. See how he plays the win this time. Pretty good gust, probably 10 to 15 miles an hour coming straight across the field. He wants to probably aim it out at that right goal post. From 47 yards, he missed from 48. He misses from 47. The Vandals still are not on the scoreboard. 
Wolverton was a perfect seven of seven. Coming into the football game, he is 0 of 2. Eastern Washington on Woodward Stadium. Ryan Wolverton with 7 of 7 coming in. And the junior out of Durango, Colorado, is 0 for 2. Though it is a difficult day to kick. Idaho starting to move the football. And now Eastern Washington in their own territory at the 31-yard line. David Lewis is swallowed up by Brian Strandley and Tommy Connect. Strandley, the senior out of Tacoma, was the first to get him. Strandley, who had a shoulder injury last spring, missed most of spring football. Really a nice move from his left tackle spot. As you can see, watch Strandley. He's going head up with Harold Fox. That's been a good battle. And then that play, he just beats Fox into the backfield, and David Lewis does not have a chance. Brian Strandley at 6'3", 264. Another solid defender in that Idaho front. A loss of three, second and 13. Wide open as Gerald Jackson makes the catch. Loses the football. Idaho has it. The Vandals have the football. Jeff Hill, the safety, picked up the loose ball on the fumble by Gerald Jackson. And it looks like this play is over, and Jackson's going out of bounds, but he didn't take care of the football when the defender came back into the play. Let's see how he loses it. It's a really nice throw by Todd Burnett. Wide open. Now watch what happens. The ball just gets stripped. Stays in bounds. Good break for the Vandals there. Nice job by Cedric West. Another angle, Cedric West stripping the football, staying on the ball. Gets an Idaho bounce, and the Vandals are back in business on offense. Brennan is back to pass, finds Kyle Gary into Eastern Washington territory, and down to the 39-yard line. And the Idaho Vandals have found their rhythm on offense. The last couple of drives with Brennan directing the attack for Idaho, Rich, it's just been a, a play or two that's really taken Idaho out of a couple of things. You can see his confidence continue to build with the short passes. Idaho doing a good job. The receivers getting underneath the secondary and just behind the linebackers. Sheridan May bounces it outside. Runs over LeVon Major, and Major's teammates are there to help out Dion Alexander on the stop. Craig Steinmetzer did a nice job from his tackle position for Eastern Washington to really bottle that play up. But there you saw a great example of why Sheridan May is so effective. Steinmetzer was in the backfield. May saw where the hole was going to be, hit it, bounced off, went back to the left, and picked up positive yardage. Craig Steinmetzer, number 93, is having a heck of a year. At 34 yard line. Brennan to the sideline. Gary makes the catch. Brady shoves him out of bounds. Short of the first down, I believe. It'll be very, very close. The sticks were down, and now as they pick the sticks up, that's right on the stick. And it looks like they are a little short, Rich. They'll be uh, third down. But look at the stats for Brennan. Six of eight, 112 yards. Had the one interception. Obviously, he'd like to have back. And that was early when he did come in for Eric Hysaw. Hysaw, the indication is a knee injury. It's just a general report, but he is out for the game. That's been confirmed. Joel Thomas is caught behind the 30. He'll lose the yard. And there's Craig Steinmetzer again. Evan Brady also went on the start. Boy, Steinmetzer was really off the ball quick. Let's take a look. You can see he just gets great penetration. And he beat uh, one of the offensive linemen for Idaho, but Evan Brady in there. A big defensive stand. It looks like Idaho's going for this one. They've missed two field goals, and this is a fourth down and one. Sheridan May is the lone setback. Brennan on a bootleg. He'll keep it. And he'll get the first down. Following his guard, Mike Hughes, around right end. Good call by the University of Idaho. Brian Brennan, obviously very athletic. Run the football. 
Just when it looked like everything was stacked up inside, he took it to the outside, and the Vandal drive stays alive. A good play call. You see the guard there, Mike Hughes, leading the play. But Eastern Washington came back into it pretty quickly, too. It wasn't, uh, wasn't an easy pickup. Brennan DeGary trying to get outside does, and he scampers out of bounds at the 21-yard line. Kyle Gary last week had five catches for 153 yards and two touchdowns. Rich, as a collective group, this Vandal receiving core is, according to John L. Smith, is as good as they've ever had at the University of Idaho. You hear a lot about Kyle Gary, but uh, a lot of the other players, too, in this offense, uh, they're not getting the ball maybe as much as Kyle Gary, but certainly uh, they're a big part of why Idaho's offense has been so effective. Five minutes left in this first half. 12-0 Eastern Washington. Sheridan May with a penalty flag down. There was time left on the play clock. I think it's going to be Dead a procedure foul. call. Dead ball Both procedure start foul by against the uh, Idaho. Five yard penalty. See if we can pick it up. Here you can see the guard there on that side moving a little early, and the officials blew it dead. Jay Lukes was the culprit. Wow. That deserves a wow. Boston College about to upset Notre Dame. Inside screen, McKenzie can't hold the football. I'm not sure if it's a catch. He has a pickup of two yards if he did hold on. Evan Brady on the stop. McKenzie is a junior out of Fort Lauderdale. He's coming in on that inside screen. You can see the three receivers. You can see the throw underneath, but watch number 49, Tim Scott. It looks like the ball came out. You can see Evan Brady and Tim Scott both there for Eastern Washington. Pretty well defended by the Eagles. It was ruled a catch, and it's third down and seven now at the Eastern Washington 25-yard line. Brandon throws short. Joel Thomas. Arano is there to make the catch, or to make the stop, as Thomas was caught at the 23-yard line. Now do you go back to Ryan Wolverton, Arnie, or do you go for it on fourth down? Yeah, it looks like Idaho's going to go for it again here. They picked it up on fourth down and one, but this is a different situation. It'll be fourth down and five. Rob Arano coming back into the play defensively for Eastern Washington, number 81, along with Keon Alexander. But the Vandals again trying to go for it here. Having trouble setting the offense. They have to get to the 18-yard line. Brennan to the air. Incomplete. Penalty flag down. Interference on Lee Brown. They went for it all. Brian Brennan going for Kyle Gary. Okay, coming right at you. Idaho with no backs. Vertical pass. Let's see. There's the contact right there. Good call by the official. And this will be a half the, half the uh, yardage to the goal line, half the distance to the goal line penalty, and an automatic first down. Defense, pass interference. Lee Brown, the senior. Down. It's one of the few passes that Brennan has thrown vertically up the field. They have given him a steady diet of short screens, short passes over the middle. I don't know if that's what they think they can accomplish now or maybe just to build his confidence up. Well, I think that's got a little bit to do with it. You build the confidence up and let him get into the flow of the football game. But certainly, he looks like he's into the flow pretty well. Joel Thomas is the lone setback behind the redshirt freshman, Brian Brennan. He's got a lot of room. He'll throw it incomplete. He was looking for his tight end, Andy Gilroy. Now, Brian Brennan may have uh, scored if he would have hung out of the football, just tucked it and, and run. But I think uh, he saw something happening with his offense, saw a receiver clearing. But, but take a look here, all the room that he has to the left side of your screen. Picks up a lineman. Not a good throw. Not a good throw. He's behind the receiver. Maybe not. Maybe, you know, he could have picked up some positive yardage, but probably a good decision. A lot easier to make those decisions from up here than it is down the field. 
Second and goal from the seven. Brennan on a draw, and he's hit by Evan Brady. Tim Scott was there to flush him out. It will be third down and goal. Troy Alexander also there. You can see uh, Idaho looking to the right side. They had three receivers up to the left. But there you saw Tim Scott coming on the blitz. And Evan Brady also there. So Eastern Washington, a little bit of a pressure package, forces Idaho into another third and long situation here. A loss of three. From the 10, quick pop, incomplete. The ball was tipped and Gary was blasted. And although Kyle Gary is arguing right now, once the ball is uh, tipped at the line of scrimmage, you're fair game. You're fair game, all bets are off. Once the ball is tipped and receivers can be contacted, let's see who got the hand up. It looked like it was Evan Brady. And then again, once that ball is tipped, uh, the receivers uh, are not protected any longer. So now Idaho with a shorter field goal attempt for Wolverton. 27 yards. He's missed twice from beyond 45. This one is good, and the Vandals are on the board. Ryan Wolverton, one of three on the day, a 27-yard field goal, and a big shot in the arm for the Vandals to get on the scoreboard. There are some Vandal fans who have made their way up I-95. Majority of them are on one side, the eastern side. And you can see there aren't too many seats left in this place. Pretty full house. They're expecting between six and 7,000. Obviously, a lot of Vandal fans here. Not too far to go. Coming up on Prime Sports Northwest, more college football action. Tonight, the Oregon Ducks and the Washington State Cougars. It's a 9 o'clock start. Tape delayed on Prime Sports Northwest. 12 plays, 43 yards for John L. Smith. And the Vandals. Tomorrow night, San Jose State and the Huskies. Wolverton will kick it off. And it's Anderson. Remember, he was blasted on his only return of the day. And this one is out to the 20-yard line. And Anderson is a little bit slow in getting up. Well, along with the uh, resurgence of the van possession, that turned into three Idaho points. 14 straight possessions. That's unbelievable. Burnett hit as he throws, and it's incomplete. Todd Burnett was drilled by Barry Mitchell. Barry Mitchell along with Ryan Phillips, the two defensive ends in the Idaho defensive scheme. Watch the left of your screen. He just goes over the top of a back and Todd Burnett has no chance at all. Coming into this game, Mitchell had 14 quarterback pressures. Make it 15. Boy, this is fair game. David Lewis doesn't get the block and Mitchell comes down hard on Burnett. On second and 10, Mitchell hit hard by Duke Garrett. He's going nowhere. It will be third down now. Idaho defense did a nice, nice job getting the football, as you call Duke Garrett getting in there first. Then Jeff Hill came up from his free safety spot to finish it off. But this Idaho defense has been very, very stingy against the run. Eastern trying to get somewhat of a ground game going. Couldn't do it. Down third and long, it'll be interesting to see if they go up with it. Minute 42 left in the half. Idaho has the momentum, but Eastern has the lead, 12 to three. Burnett to the sideline, in and out of the hands of Jackson, and there was Cedric West to put the hurt on Gerald Jackson. Boy, and that's a good way to describe it. Jackson was really extended on the sideline. And watch number seven, Cedric West. And watch the shot here as the ball goes up and out. West playing the receiver. 
and may have delivered somewhat of a message there as well. Idaho is going to get the football back with a little over a minute in great field position. Tom Zerflu is into punts. breaking through a high snap but green slit comes from the right side would have been left defensive end position and it threw the timing off just enough green slit was really not held long enough and let's see if idaho can take advantage of this situation sheridan may getting outside inside the end zone touchdown vandals Seven yards out. And it's a 12-9 football game. On comes Wolverton for the extra points. sudden it's a two-point ball game with a minute 13 left in the first half Fritz last week Idaho scored two touchdowns within a nine-second span against Idaho State and really blew the football game open Idaho State had just scored with about a minute and 30 left in the half to make it 21-14 Idaho went down uh, with the ensuing kickoff scored in, in a little less than a minute and then uh, on Brian Wolverton connected Jake Greenslit with the block and May's touchdown has made it 12-10. Anderson gets this one at his 10. Jason Anderson out to the 35-yard line. If you're Eastern Washington, Arnie, do you go conservative and run the clock out and go in at halftime with a two-point lead, or do you put it up? I think you put it up at the 35-yard line. I think you put it up if you're down around your 20 then maybe you reevaluate re that, but still a lot of time. Um, Eastern Washington has had good success through the air in this first half, not so in the last you know, couple of possessions, but certainly they're capable of moving the football. But Idaho's defense has been settling in pretty good. Burnett throws short, in and out of the hands of Harden, it's intercepted. Montrell Williams with the ball. And he's down at the 44-yard line. And now it's the Vandals who have a minute to work with. What a disastrous minute for Eastern Washington. The Vandals have scored a field goal. They've blocked the punt and scored a touchdown. And now they pick off this Burnett pass. You can see right through the hands. And then all of a sudden, Montreal Williams is there. Doesn't get much of a return. But the Vandals have to like the way the uh, momentum has certainly shifted here in the last few minutes of this first half. It's a lot of time, 59 seconds left. Idaho has two timeouts remaining. And I think Eastern Washington might have called the timeout. The Eagles have just been one minute left. First half, Idaho has come storming back in this football game. The redshirt freshman quarterback, Brian Brennan, at the controls. He has time. He's going deep for McKenzie, and he overthrew him. Second down at 10. On the coverage, Troy Turner. Well, as we can see with Brian Brennan, the Vandals are not afraid to start going vertical now. Brennan out of Lacey, Washington. He did have a chance to absorb last year as a redshirt. The injury to High saw he's in here. And scrambling down to the 40-yard line, caught by Troy Alexander. The Vandals will use one of their timeouts. They will have one left with 42 seconds left on the clock. Coming up at halftime, of course, 
will have on Washington 40 yard line. Brandon on a quarterback draw. He'll tuck it under and get out of bounds. Close to the first down. He could have picked up a couple more yards. And he headed to the sideline, the opposite sideline of the yardage markers. But I think he has enough for the first down. Looked like he wanted to go to his tight end, number 31, Andy Gilroy. But all of a sudden, Eastern Washington gets a pretty good push up the middle. And now the receivers are upfield starting to pick up blocks. But Brennan gets what he can. And he does pick up the first down. 34 seconds left. Remember, Wolverton has good range. Even though he's missed a couple long kicks, they both have the distance. Brennan with lots of time to the sidelines for May. He's caught by Evan Brady, who importantly keeps him in bounds and keeps the clock moving. The Vandals will stop it with 20 seconds left. And that being their final timeout now, they obviously, if they run a play and don't stop the clock, it may take them a while to get the field goal unit out. It is second down, so they do have a down where they can ground. It has uh, shifted just a little bit. But it's still pretty much blowing across the field. Second and seven. Brennan, oh, he wanted to go deep, and he's caught, spins away, still on his feet, headed to the sideline, and he'll get out of bounds. I'm not sure if Eastern Washington's defensive line thought they were in the NFL or not, but it almost looked, Arnie, like they were waiting for the official's whistle. Well, Brian Brennan at 6'5", 207, obviously a big, strong athlete, settles into the pocket. All of a sudden, it's breaking down, and he runs through Troy Alexander. Alexander kind of gave up on the play. And boy, what a heady play by Brennan getting out of bounds, and now Idaho has a chance to take the lead. Wolverton has missed from 48 to 47. He's 8 of 10 on the season. 43 yards. I'm listening. It is long enough. No good. And Eastern Washington has avoided another Vandal field goal attempt. It would have been a huge turn of events. The Vandals forcing a turnover with a minute left. But no points to show for it. And that really, what was that? Stop the streak of 15 straight turnovers that the Vandals have turned into points? I believe that was the, would have been the 14th straight right there. Mm. They had dug. Well, it was 13. Oh, excuse me. It would, you're right. It, it was 15. It stopped at 15. He mm. was trailing. He lost his starting quarterback. And things looked pretty grim. But as they head to the locker room at halftime, here in Cheney, Washington, the Idaho Vandals are back in it. East Spokane, Missoula, Boise, Bozeman. Elio Montana has jumped all the way up to number two right now with these Vandals right behind. Two teams in the top five, four in the top 25 for the Big Sky. Boise State making the biggest jump last week from last week. The Eagles on top by a score of 12 to 10. This started off as an Eastern Washington day. Torrey Smith on the bootleg, trying to get around right end, and he just does, and a great effort, Arnie, to get to the end zone. Very Zerflu, the punter, and here comes Jake Greenslit. Watch off to the right side of your screen. Greenslit took advantage of a high snap and got by his blocker, stayed with the play, and set Idaho up for the next touchdown. Sheridan May would take it in around left end. It was a seven-yard run. The Vandals were within two. Eastern Washington holding on to a two-point lead, would then throw an interception. First quarter by Eastern Washington. But as you can see, once they finish the second quarter, Idaho has caught up. Remember that Eastern Washington came into this game allowing only 49 yards a game rushing. Idaho already rushed for 76 on the other side of the coin. Idaho also good against the rush, only allowing Eastern 15. Numbers pretty even total offense. Uh, turnovers fairly even. Time of possession really in Idaho's favor. Not go well for Idaho to start with, but certainly he's got to be happy with the way things came back. For Eastern Washington, it's more of a case of executing the offense and hanging on to the football. 
Dwight McKenzie and Kyle Gary are deep. It's McKenzie at the nine, and we're underway in the second half. McKenzie breaks a tackle and gets out to the 27-yard line. The Eagles, we, we talked about the injuries that, that Idaho has suffered in this football game, losing Hysaw and their freshman cornerback, Arnold Gunn. Eastern Washington has lost a key member of their special teams. Jason Patrick is out for the day with a leg injury. And now the red-shirt freshman, Brian Brennan, from his 28-yard line. On play action over the middle, Griffin with the catch. Griffin still on his feet. He's down at the 38-yard line. David Griffin, the sophomore out of Fontana, and he paid the price. Lee Brown put a good hit on him in Eastern Washington territory. Rich, we're talking about how effective Idaho is off of play fakes, but watch this. You think it's going to go to Sheridan May, and boy, what a hole he would have had. But a quick play fake, linebackers are frozen. And now all of a sudden you get a receiver in behind those linebackers. It's a very easy throw for Brennan. And there's the outside hit and, and an ouch. Let's take a look at it here. You can see that Lee Brown, as you mentioned, comes in and applies the finishing touch. But certainly a big offensive play to start this second half. <laughs> and John L. Smith is happy to see Griffin get back on his feet. He lost two players in practice this week. He's lost a pair in the first half here. He doesn't have much more depth at that wide receiver spot. He's already lost Keith Neal. And Griffin looked like he just had the wind knocked out of him. Idaho has the football at the Eastern Washington 37-yard line now on first down and 10. Sheridan May gets the ball this time, and he's got some yardage inside the 30 down to the 28-yard line. Idaho all season long has come out very strong in the second half. Watch the offensive push that that Idaho line gets, and, and no one lays a hand on Sheridan May until he's about six yards up the field. Nice job by Eric Johnson, the center, the weak, weak side guard Jay Lukes, and Jim Mills, the weak side tackle on that side. Sheridan May gets a lot of the pub, but that offensive front certainly uh, provides it for him. A gain of nine, second and one. Joel Thomas, he's untouched until he gets inside the 20, and he's down to the 15-yard line. Almost a 15-yard pickup for Joel Thomas. Take a look, just straight ahead blocking by Idaho. Good block by Mike Hughes and Eric Johnson again. And boy, when you're getting holes like that, it makes it really easy for a running back. But nothing fancy for the Vandals, one back. Tight splits in the offensive front. They're just driving off straight ahead. A two tight end set. May burst into the backfield. Stays on his feet. And he's close to the end zone. He's down at the one yard line. Great balance and great vision by Sheridan May. You can see that hand go down about the seven or eight yard line. Watch the hole again opened up by the front. Very tight splits by the line. And they're just driving people off the ball. Watch that nice move there by Sheridan May to stay up and pick up about another six or seven yards. Impressive drive here in the third quarter for Idaho. The opening play, a pass to David Griffin, but then they've stayed on the ground to Sheridan May, and this man, Joel Thomas, who's into the end zone. Touchdown, Idaho. And the Vandals have scored again. 16 unanswered points for Idaho, and they take their first lead of the ball game, 16 to 12. Again, that offensive line surge, and Joel Thomas is into the end zone before there is a tackler. That offensive front credits the offensive front on that drive. A one-yard run, and the Vandals now, with a four-point differential, will go for two. And they will go for the two-point conversion. Thomas, the lone setback. Brennan to put it up with a ton of time. Now throwing and flag down. Incomplete in the end zone. The flag is not in the end zone. It's in the offensive backfield. And this looks like a hold against Idaho, which will be declined. Thank you. 
But Brian Brennan, the redshirt freshman, has risen to the occasion as he leads the Vandals on a 72-yard touchdown drive and puts Idaho on top 16 to 12. Joel Thomas scoring from a yard out. Both teams have had lots of opportunities to get additional points in this football game, Arnie. The Eagles have missed a pair of extra points. Idaho now missing a two-point conversion. They've missed three field goal attempts. You know, we were talking, Rich, about Idaho coming out of the locker room hot. Idaho now has scored a combined total of 118 points to 16 for their opponents in the first and third quarters of this season alone. And in talking to Mike Kramer this week, his biggest concern was the third quarter. He said, talk to me at the end of the third quarter, then I'll tell you where we stand because the Vandals are so scary coming out of the locker room. And Rich, you know, I think this is a big possession for Eastern Washington. Idaho had plenty of momentum going into the uh, halftime, and now they take the second half kickoff go right up the field and score. Eastern Washington is down in the game for the first time. I really think mentally for the rest of the game for Eastern Washington, this drive is very, very key. If they get something going, get some points on the board, I think they're going to be okay the rest of the ball game. But just mentally, it's got to be real tough on a team if after seeing Idaho go up, take the score, um, to come back from that. So this will be an interesting possession for Eastern Washington. Wolverton to kick off. Jason Anderson, the man in the middle. A high but short kick, and it's Antonio Morgan at his 18. He gets outside, across the 30, and out to the 32-yard line. So it's relatively good field position for Eastern Washington, who had tremendous success early on in the in the first half but the last four possessions for eastern washington disastrous well just a nightmare look look at the uh, the yardage one yard a punt a fumble a block punt and then an interception and that's where idaho came back into the game credit the defense tom burnett and company looking at first and ten their own 32 yard line they'll put it up in and out of the hands of Nick Shaw. And it will be second down and 10. Idaho's, uh, Eastern Washington's offense in the last couple of possessions of the first half really got out of rhythm. As you take a look at Todd Burnett's numbers, not too bad, but certainly a lot of that yardage was in the first quarter and early in the second quarter. So Idaho has done a good job defensively taking Eastern Washington out of their rhythm. On second and ten, Vandal showing blitz, and here they come. Burnett swallowed up by the Vandal rush. Gardner Moody, I believe, with the stop. Duke Garrett from the outside. Yeah, Duke Garrett came charging in. Duke Garrett, very versatile player. Watch him from the left side of your screen. Basically comes in untouched from the corner. Garrett now on the right side here. You'll see him come in. No one blocks him, and Todd Burnett does not have a chance. That pass was designed to get off much quicker than that. And the Eagles in a third and long. At their own 28, it's a four-man rush this time. Burnett over the middle. Gerald Jackson with a catch in Vandal territory. First down, Eastern Washington. Vandals had him bracketed pretty well by the strong safety and the free safety. Jason O'Neill, number 22, and Jeff Hill, number 16. But Todd Burnett does a good job. Good protection up front. Players out of his vision. He delivers the ball. You can see that uh, Jason O'Neill was trying to get back into the play. But a big throw and a big gainer for Eastern Washington. Montana on top of the Lumberjacks in the second quarter. Here comes another blitz. This time they pick up Garrett. Burnett throws short. It's caught to the 25. Rex Prescott down to the five-yard line. His first play of the football game, and little Rex Prescott scampers all the way down to the Idaho 
five-yard line. Well, you can see Todd Burnett was directing traffic as he got flushed out of the pocket, and he wanted Prescott to go up the field. Let's take a look. Watch off to the right side of the screen. You can see that Idaho's defensive front is starting to get some pressure. Duke Garrett gets in there. Now there you see Burnett directing traffic, wanted Prescott to go back to the middle of the field, and he is isolated on Dave Longoria, linebacker, and Prescott's going to win that foot race every time. Mm. Torsey Smith in at quarterback. Eastern Washington first and goal from the Idaho five-yard line. David Lewis, no room outside, no room inside. Barry Mitchell, the sophomore. One of the many vandals on the pursuit. Mitchell made the tackle. Well, you can see how tough that Idaho defense is against the run. And Eastern Washington did have problems inside the 10. You can see it's really bottled up quickly on the outside. Good play there by Tommy Connect to turn it back in. He's responsible for that flat and getting the play back to the center of the field. But Todd Burnett's back in the game at quarterback. A loss of a yard, second and goal from the six. Eagles will put it up. Here comes the blitz. Burnett for the corner for Shaw, and he overthrows him. Third down and goal. Timing play for Nick Shaw just led just a little bit too much by Todd Burnett. Three-step drop. Now you throw it up. The long pass. It's about a, it's about a 35-yard throw for Burnett. He's not happy with it, but a tough throw to make. And now a big third down play. From the six, Burnett, same play. Jackson can't hold on, it's incomplete. Oh, Gerald Jackson had it right in his hands. A brilliant throw by Burnett. And Eastern Washington will have to settle for a field goal attempt. Same call, as you mentioned. Oh, so close, Gerald Jackson at 5'8". Can't quite get out there. And the Eagles will attempt the field goal. Zerf flew now from 23 yards. He had a kick blocked from the exact same spot on the field in the first half. The spot, the kick, it's up. It is good. And so Tom Zerf flew brings Eastern Washington within a single point. The Eagles answer back. Vandals lead it on Prime Sports Northwest. In the 15. Tom Zerf flew will kick off. Montrell Williams at the one almost stepped out of bounds and now he's across the 20 Montrell Williams could go all the way he's 30 he's 20 penalty flag down touchdown Idaho Montrell Williams will get a penalty for taunting, but he goes 98 yards for the touchdown. Artie, he almost stepped out of bounds when he caught that football. There was an official standing right there watching his feet, and he did a tightrope at the one or two yard line, broke it back into the center of the field, then picked up some blocks. The touchdown will stand. The penalty on the extra points. Watch his feet. Oh, very close. An official looking right down on it. Now watch this. Couple of blocks. Missed tackle. And you can see the kicker now is the only one left. Now there's the taunt right there. A flag will come in. The penalty will be on assessed the kickoff. on the kickoff. On the kickoff. I said extra point. I was mistaken. And Idaho, as I mentioned earlier in the game, had not uh, done really that much with their kickoff return game. And on certainly Idaho has turned it around. On the kickoff, 15 yard penalty. The Vandals on top, 22 15. Zerflu can put them up by eight, or rather, uh, Wolverton can put them up by eight. He 
does. It will go in the books as a 100-yard kickoff return for a touchdown. The Idaho Vandals, like lightning, lead Eastern Washington on Prime Sports Northwest. Started. Take a look at this tightrope job Rush by Montreal right, Williams. Watch right over here, right on the sideline. Let's take a look right in this area, right here. Take a look here. Ooh, ooh, very now, close. Now watch this step. An official right there. Ooh, 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 ooh. Watch all th those first three steps. Now you can see he just breaks it up and in and gets some blocks, a couple of misses, and no one's going to catch Montreal Williams. And the taunt right there will cost Idaho 15 yards on the kickoff. That is our Idaho Powerball play of the game. Brought to you by the Idaho Lottery, who bring you Powerball. Saturday's jackpot, $29 million. $29 million? It could happen to you. Jeez. Penalty flag goes down. Idaho's kicking this football at the 20-yard line. We have delay a game. And they took too much Idaho. time. Arnie, they're going to have to kick this off at the 15 now. A delay of game penalty on the kickoff. I have never seen that when a team is lined up. Well, the, the play clock runs from 25 seconds down. They're very visible to both teams. They're in both end zones. John L. Smith not happy with it, but uh, once the official blows the, the ball into play, that clock starts, so Idaho will kick now from its 15-yard line. Another key possession for Eastern Washington. They're going to get good field position off this kick. The Vandals have a new kicker out there. Troy Scott will kick, not Wolverton. It's a good kick. Anderson at his 20. In traffic. He's planted at the 38-yard line. Troy Ergana, or rather Tony Oranga. Montana 7-3 on top of Northern Arizona. He's got to go. You can't call. Montana State has scored first against Idaho State. Here, Eastern Washington had a 12-0 lead, but the Idaho Vandals have outscored Eastern Washington 23-3, and it's a 23-15 lead. Eastern moved the football in their last possession. They came away with a 23-yard field goal. Let's see what the Burnett and company do here. Jesse Hart's had a busy day, makes the catch and Tommy Connect makes the tackle. There's an interesting story on Tommy Connect. He's a guy that last year was a starter on defense for the Stanford Cardinal. He went to Stanford originally out of Corvallis in hopes of playing quarterback. Lots of quarterbacks at Stanford. They switched him to defense. He came to Idaho in hopes of playing quarterback this year but injured his shoulder in the offseason. He had some arm trouble in the spring and they moved him out to uh, one of the weak outside linebacker spots and he's found a home there. Good athlete. Pick up of four at second and six. Hard in motion. Lewis gets the call. And he gets belted at the 45-yard line. And on the hit was Jeff Hill coming up from his free safety position. It'll be third down and about four. Tough inside running for Eastern Washington as it's been all day long. Watch off to the left side of the screen. Pretty decent push, but boy, Idaho gets back into the play very, very quickly. You can see Garrett's there and a, and a host of others. They mark it just outside the 45. It's third down and three. Here comes the blitz. Burnett going short, caught by Nick Shaw. And he's caught from behind at the 46-yard line in Idaho territory. He has enough for the first down. Shaw just a freshman out of Prosser, Washington. Idaho's defense was showing blitz from the outside again with Duke Garrett. But Todd Burnett got the play call. He wanted the quick pass to the outside. They threw the pass right where Garrett came from. And they pick up the first down. Duke Garrett having a pretty big day today. Lewis is the lone setback. Idaho blitzing again. Burnett with time overthrows Gerald Jackson 
And it's incomplete. The Vandals have started to bring the heat a little bit. Yeah, they, they've been conservative with the blitz this year. They, they, they do it sometimes, but today we've seen it a little more. But you saw an example there that if Todd Burnett maybe had another half second to throw that football, he's got a guy coming open on the post. Eastern Washington, watch their front. They pick it up pretty good. And there's uh, Todd, or, uh, David Lewis picking up the blitz, but you can see that Burnett's got to throw the ball out to Jackson a little quicker than he would like to. Second down and 10 from the Idaho 47-yard line. In motion, Jason Anderson. Anderson gets it on the inside screen and can't hold on to the football. And it's third down and 10. Example there of Anderson trying to go with it before he had the ball. But Idaho's defense was in pretty good shape. Left tackle Tim Wilson was in there. Watch Anderson coming back behind the line of scrimmage. That's why his lineman can go upfield. Ball thrown just a little bit behind him. And as our producer has just pointed out, Bill Cooper said that it's probably better that he dropped that. He probably would have lost yardage. I agree. Idaho on top, 23-15, 8-10 left, third quarter. From the Vandal 47 on third and 10, Burnett scrambling, unloads. Great catch by Anderson, who was hit hard, but held on. Jeff Hill again making the hits. Another big third down conversion for Eastern Washington. Watch on the left side of your screen as Burnett starts to get flushed out. You can see that uh, Barry Mitchell runs by Burnett, and there's a big hit lowered on Burnett as he delivers the football, but what a catch by Jason Anderson. Not only is he a burner, but he's not afraid to go up over the middle and in traffic and grab the football, and Eastern certainly needed that to keep this drive alive. Rex Prescott has checked into the ball game. Last time he was in, he caught the ball and went 40-some yards down to the five-yard line. Burnett, a little bit of heat going over the middle for Jackson, or rather Antonio Morgan. No flag. There was contact. Montrell Williams on the coverage. The officials are saying it was an uncatchable pass, and thus no flag. Montrell Williams being challenged on the post. Straight drop back for Burnett. A little pressure steps out of it. Now he's going vertical. Ooh. I and don't know. The, and the officials rule the ball, uncatchable pass, no foul. Second down and 10. Jesse Hart in motion. A little Rex Prescott gets it. And he's tripped up. Tommy connects in there on the stop. Idaho's defensive front really been coming with their uh, ears pinned back of really trying to pressure Todd Burnett. See the offensive uh, play call by Eastern Washington, maybe try to pop a running play past that uh, charging defensive front, didn't happen. And the Eagles face with another third down call. Duke Garrett having a good day. Has a chance to get 100 tackles for Idaho in his third consecutive year. From the 32, it's third and nine. Eastern tries to keep the drive alive. Burnett buying some time. Overthrows Anderson. It's incomplete. Fourth down, and Tom Zerflu, the field goal kicker, has a long kick of 47. This would be about a 49-yarder. But Eastern Washington may just go for it here. They will. On the 32, and I think you're going to see that happen. Fourth down and 10. It, they have picked up a couple of third down and longs, but this is fourth down and long. Call it nine. Here comes the blitz. Burnett steps up and falls over. The Vandals have held. Ryan Phillips with the pressure. Burnett trying to escape the pocket, stumbled. I'm not sure if he stumbled over a, a, an Idaho Vandal or maybe one of his own blockers. But it's a big defensive sequence for the Vandals. Well, as you said, Rich, Idaho coming with a blitz, trying to get as much pressure as possible. And certainly the defense sets the offense up in pretty good field position. And the redshirt freshman, Brian Brennan, takes over. Play action. 
Lots of time going deep for Neal. It is intercepted at the 10. Lee Brown. To Rich, that was the same play. Idaho used the first play of the second half, except they threw it a little shorter over the middle. And Lee Brown makes a perfect play on this football. Play fake to Sheridan May. And now Brennan's going to go vertical, and the ball's underthrown. You can see that Kyle Gary was open, but a good adjustment on the football by Lee Brown. Usually the offensive, the offensive receiver has the advantage in that situation coming back to the ball, but Lee Brown played it beautifully. In essence, for Idaho, it's as good as a punt in that situation because Eastern is backed up to their own 10-yard line. But you haven't taken any time off the clock. True, Burnett for Anderson. It's incomplete. He tried to go up and over the cover man. Cedric West. West did a nice job covering on the inside. He is with Jason Anderson step for step. Good protection. Oh, never never saw the football. I take it back. Uh, Cedric West was coming back into the play. Never saw the football. He was in good position, though. He was. Timely. <laughs> And he's just thinking, geez, how many more of these am I going to see today? And probably quite a few. Six and a half minutes left, third quarter. It's 23-15. Idaho on top, Rex Prescott. Bounces his way out close to the 15. He's down about the 14-yard line. And another third down situation. Facing Eastern Washington. Prescott out of Seattle. He's a freshman. He gives David Lewis a break, and he gives Eastern Washington a little bit of a different look. He's a little more explosive, whereas Lewis is a, a little more of a north-south guy. Prescott will head to the sideline. Now, Rich, in this situation, Idaho has come with a lot of pressure off of the outside. This time they come with four. Burnett's pass. Anderson trying to get the first down. Does he have enough? I think so. Down at the 22, he had to get to the 21. Not an easy pass to throw across the field to the sideline. A really tough pass to throw. There's a good example of Jason Anderson knowing exactly how far he had to go. Anderson, the low receiver right here, just runs a sideline route. West trying to read the quarterback, gives him a pretty big cushion. But Anderson is right where he needs to be to pick up the first down and move the stick. He's a veteran, the senior out of Hoquiam. Burnett's numbers starting to accumulate. And the drive continues, first and 10. Idaho shows blitz at the Eastern 22. Here they come. Burnett throws short and incomplete. He threw behind his man, Tim Hunsaker, with the junior tight ends. Eastern Washington going away from the blitz that time. Tommy Connect coming from a strong linebacker position for Idaho. Was behind the play, thought he might get to Todd Burnett. Jeff Hill on the coverage. And it's second down and 10. You know, this half, Idaho has really done a good job on first and second down, preventing really long plays. And, and Eastern Washington has been forced into some third and long situations that they did, would just as soon not have. But they have not been all that effective on, you know, early in the down situations this half. From the 22, blitz again. Rex Prescott makes the catch. And he's close to the first down. He'll be short by about a yard. You know, I think Prescott was expecting the football, but not quite that quickly. And Burnett had to dump it off pretty you know, quicker than he would have liked to. Watch it on the right side of your screen. Prescott's in there as a blocking back. He comes out looks back to the football and is very close to the first down. A little delay pattern. Eastern has not faced many third down and shorts. Most of their third downs have been about third and eight, third and ten. Hunsanker's lined up as a fullback in front of Lewis. In motion is Hartz. Lewis gets the football and he doesn't have the first down. He's short. Not 
Idaho with a big stop defensively. Tim Wilson got there first. Well, Idaho's down front four really doing a nice job. You know, they create opportunities for the linebackers in the secondary in those situations to come up and make stops. Zerf flew into punts. Kyle Gary, very dangerous. Standing at the Idaho 37-yard line. It's a good punt. Gary trying to get outside. Doesn't. Steve Matson on the special teams makes the stop. Timeout on the field. Idaho on top. Three and a half left in the third. Eastern Washington defense will be called upon to stop the Vandals. Idaho with an eight-point lead. Three and a half left third quarter. Brian Brennan with the football. His own 32, Sharon May, hits by Troy Alexander. He'll have a gain of maybe one. Last possession, the Eagle defense came up big. One play and out after the pass interception. But again, they're being asked to stop Idaho here, try to get some field position. Sheridan May closing in on Willis Smith. 66 yards short. I don't think he'll get it today, though. Although a lot of football to be played. Three minutes left, third quarter. Brennan checking off, play action. Flushed out, tucks it under. And a big kid lumbers around to the 46-yard line before he's knocked down with the first down. Evan Brady made the stop. Brandon got a nice block from Joel Thomas as he was flushed out of the pocket. But Brennan uh, really has nifty feet. Watch off to the left here. Watch number 20, Joel Thomas. There, right in the middle of your screen. Now watch the block he gets right here. Bing. It's on Craig Steinmetzer. And Brennan picks up a first down for Ryan. Sheridan May, a gain of maybe two. Well, Sheridan May is just one of those running backs. Not many guys tackle him at the first try. He usually gets by that first one. Reminds me a lot of Devin Pierce in that respect. And that no one ever tackled Pierce when he played at Idaho a few years ago at the initial point of, of contact. Then he, he'd roll off and then people would get to him after that. But uh, certainly Sheridan May is the whole package. A gain of three seconds and seven. And Joel Thomas, the lone setback now. Again, play action. Brennan throws. Kyle Gary the catch. He's out of bounds, and he has a first down. The Vandals moving the sticks now. We're very impressed with Brian Brennan and what he's done in this uh, Idaho offense. Look at his numbers since coming in in the second quarter. Pretty impressive. Two interceptions, obviously, he would like to change those, but he has done a nice job in directing this Idaho attack. Eric Heisaw, the junior who has had a tremendous year, injured his knee early in the first half. Joel Thomas trying to get outside. Pursuit catches up. That pursuit is named Dion Alexander. Gain of a couple. Lee Brown also on the stop. Watch how Eastern Washington goes down the line. You can see the push that Idaho tries to get. And Joel Thomas might have been better off keeping that ball inside to let Deion Alexander get back into the play. He chose to go outside, picked up a couple. Eastern Washington had a 12-0 lead in this football game, but the Idaho Vandals have come back. Eight-point lead with a minute 18 left, third quarter. Sheridan May, flagged down. May's not down to the 24-yard line. The flag is sitting at the 34-yard line of Eastern Washington. And it will erase the May carry and back the football up. Watch right in the middle of your screen. 
believe the call went against Eric Johnson, the center. Umpire was reaching for his flag pretty quickly. Holy by the offense. 10-yard penalty. Repeat second yard. Right. Down. Not sure if the hold took place a little earlier in the run. The backs of the vandals up. Second down, 11. And importantly for Idaho, also that they not only are moving the sticks, but they're getting within the range of Ryan Wolverton. Thomas is hit by Troy Turner coming up from his cornerback position. Rob Arrow now also there. It'll bring up third down. And eight. The Vandals next week home against Montana State and then home against Northern Arizona. Then hit the road to take on Montana. Eastern Washington next week travels to Flagstaff to take on the Lumberjacks. Here we are, third and eight at the Eastern Washington 40-yard line. Brennan. A wobbler, but it's caught by McKenzie. Dwight McKenzie out of bounds. Flag goes down. After the play, back at the 40-yard line. A clutch catch and run by Dwight McKenzie. And this may be going against Eastern Washington, maybe tacked on the end. A little frustration by Craig Steinmetzer. See what the call is. A personal foul by the defense. And it'll be tacked on the end of the run, so it'll be half the distance to the goal. Stein Metzer was tangled up with a pair of uh, Vandal offensive linemen about 30, 40 yards away from that play. Here's a look. Watch down low. Right in the middle of your screen. Some hand-to-hand -hand combat in there. And the flag... And the uh, infraction occurred well after the run here. The result is a first down for Idaho at the 11-yard line of Eastern Washington. Joel Thomas is the lone setback behind the redshirt freshman Brian Brennan. Thomas. Brady makes the stop with some help from LaVon Major. Thomas. Let's see the strength of Joel Thomas. Bench press is well over 400 pounds. 5'7", 213, and uh, he really delivers a hit when the uh, defenders come at him. He's just a sophomore, and obviously Sheridan May is senior for the next two years. You'll see a lot of Joel Thomas. Sheridan May is checked back in the ball game. Second down at six, May straight ahead. He's inside the five. The Vandals can get a first down inside the two-yard line. Rich Idaho so effective with their running game in the one back as they spread everything out. We'll talk about that more in the fourth quarter. Vandals will be looking at third down and two inside the five. Idaho North Northwest is prohibited. Brian Brennan throwing for Dwight McKenzie in the end zone. It went in and out of his hands on third down and short. And now at fourth down, the Vandals are going to go for the field goal. And in comes Ryan Wolverton. I think this is a smart call by, by John L. Smith, assuming they kick the field goal. It would put Idaho up by at least two touchdowns. 22-yarder. Wolverton is connected from 27, but he's missed three times from beyond 40. To put the Vandals up by 11, here's the kick. It's good. So Wolverton and his 22-yard field goal now means that Eastern Washington must score twice. The Vandals Back on the board, 26-15. Eastern Washington down 11. We've just started the fourth quarter. Eastern Washington had a 12-0 lead in this football game, but Idaho has dominated from that point on. 
Vandal's getting set to kick off. It's Troy Scott angling it towards the sideline and Antonio Morgan at the 20. Morgan runs into his own man and then is caught from behind by Tony Aranga. Well, Mike Kramer said after the third quarter, check with me then, I'll tell you where we stand. It's a 26-15 Idaho lead. I'm sure after going on top 12 to nothing, Kramer obviously would have liked to have held the lead, but being down by only 11 points, it sounds strange, is not that bad against Idaho because they have blown opponents out four times this year. Well, especially in the second half, Idaho has just really come back on some teams. We've seen it happen again today. But Eastern Washington certainly needs to get something going offensively, and this would be a good time for them to start if they're going to do that. Let's see if the Vandals continue to blitz because they've done a, a good amount of that. In the second half, Blitz is coming. Eagles pick it up, going deep for Anderson, overthrowing. And it's incomplete. They have tried to get the football in that man's hands. Eastern Washington, numbers-wise, just about even with Idaho, but the Vandals have an 11-point And there's the big lead. stat there, the, the flashing of the rushing yards. It's amazing what they can do in the truck here, isn't it? But look how balanced Idaho is offensively, 149 and 186. What they've done all year, they've been that's why they've been successful. No blitz this time, short pass. Jackson makes an acrobatic catch, but it will be for a gain of four, maybe five. Derek Smith, the strong safety, on the coverage. Take a look to the outside. You see the two outside receivers. One breaks up the field, one goes underneath. And as you mentioned, an acrobatic catch. But the hit is immediate, and it's about a five-yard gain. So another third, key third down play. And as you get later into the game, they all become key, especially when you're down. Here comes the blitz again. Hart can't hold on. Eastern Washington forced to punt and forced to give the football back to Idaho. Good play by Tommy Connect from a strong side linebacker position. I'm not sure if Hart would have hung onto the ball. He would have had the first down. Looks like to be, he was a little short of the stick. But boy, this Idaho defense has really settled in from about midway through the second quarter. Zer flew into punts. Kyle Gary is deep. The wind has stopped here at Cheney. Gary with a nifty move to avoid a tackler, then gets outside and escapes to the safety of the Idaho bench. And the Vandal offense will take over from there. We'll take a timeout. 13 minutes, 46 seconds left in the Governor's Cup. The nation trying to go to 5-0. Sheridan May breaks one, breaks two, and he's down to the 44-yard line. Sheridan May. Vandal's going with a counter trap, and Evan Brady was right in the middle of it. But then again, you see Sheridan May, how he just turns what's, what's going to look like a disaster. There's a the counter trap, the offside guard and tackle pulling. Evan Brady kind of bottles it up, and now he cuts back to the center of the field. Gets some help in there from Tim Scott from his middle linebacker position. That's another gain of six. Sheridan May again, short of the first down. He ran into Evan Brady again. And now it becomes a, a time possession game for Idaho as well. They want to keep it on the ground, run that play clock down as much as they can. Still a lot of time left in the game. But it's a keep away situation now. Joel Thomas will come back in for Sheridan May. 12 minutes and 34 seconds left in this football game. Thomas is in on third down and a very short two. 
Brennan on play action has Gary inside the 40. There goes Kyle Gary. He's 20. He's 10. He's touchdown Idaho. Kyle Gary eluded a Ryan Moore tackle on the sideline. And he goes 53 yards to put Idaho on top, 32 to 15. Good safe pass in the flat. And then Gary picks up the block on the sideline and makes it look easy. And Idaho is struck like lightning again. Ryan Wolverton into a tap the extra point. It's good. The Vandals off to a slow start in this one have dominated from the second quarter on. Idaho 33, Eastern Washington 15. Idaho went to the air and they came up a big winner. They watched the play fake right in here. But where's the quarterback? Over here, going the other way. Again, Todd Rolla. Good safe pass. Now watch what happens. Gary breaks to the sideline. Now stop it right there. There you see the block. And that's the key to the score. And Gary goes upfield. Made it look pretty easy. It was Dwight McKenzie taking out Troy Turner. Big play for the Vandals. 53 yards, first touchdown of the day for Brian Brennan, his third of the year. Troy Scott kicks off. And Jason Anderson at the two. Ooh, he's crushed. At the 18-yard line, he was hit hard by Cole Wilson. Cole Wilson, who was a starter in the Vandals secondary last year and led lead the teams with interceptions with two this season. Has been playing behind Jeff Hill at the free safety spot, but playing a lot of special teams and doing a lot of things for Idaho. A sunny day in eastern Washington and apparently some of the sun across the northwest causing havoc with the transmission of Prime Sports Northwest. And so, if you will bear with us, Back goes Burnett, going first and ten for Eastern Washington. Nick Shaw can't hold on. And the Eagles have had a bad case of the drops today. They've dropped three or four passes in key situations. Shaw just straight up the field vertically. And now Eastern Washington really pressed to get some scores quickly. Straight drop back. Good protection. And a good read. It was a good read, and Shaw should have had that one. Kind of the day it's been for the Eastern offense here in the second half. They've been experiencing some sunspots also. Sort of. Burnett trying to get the first down. He runs into Cedric West. Short of the first down. It'll bring up third down. And about three, West has had a busy day and a good day. This Idaho secondary really has solidified. Once you got to the second quarter and Idaho's defense turned up the dial, they, uh, it's been a, a very, very different ball game than the first 15 minutes. Boy, they had to be real conscious of where Jason Anderson has been all day, and they've done a really good job. Anderson has not had a big day. He's caught a few passes, but certainly not had the kind of day that Mike Kramer hoped he would have. And credit Idaho for uh, preventing that. Heads up, Todd Burnett. Tommy Connect does just that. Connect coming from the outside. Burnett started to roll away from it, but had his back turned. Watch up the top of your screen. Todd, let's stop it right there. You can see, you can see right here backside, but look where Burnett is. He's not looking. He's looking the other way. And then it just comes down. There's no way one back can pick up two receive, uh, two defenders on that particular play, and Eastern's going to have to give it up. <laughs> Burnett making sure everything's still attached. Replacing the divots on the field. Zerf flew to punt, and Kyle Gary, again, is deep, not a good punt. A real wobbler. 
It'll go out of bounds at the 41. It's a punt of 23 yards. 10 minutes and 56 seconds left in this football game. And if the Idaho Vandals can hold on to the football, they will win. Brian Brennan, and I, I guess now it would be a good time to start talking about Brian Brennan and, and the future, immediate future, of the Vandal offense. Because Eric Heisaw with the knee injury, knocked out of the ball game back in the first quarter. Brennan has led the Vandals so far so good. Troy Alexander on the stop of Sheridan May. Idaho offensive front again dominating here in the second half. Jim Mills the weak side tackle that time out of Marysville, Washington along with Jay Lukes. This offensive front for Idaho, they use really tight splits. They line up uh, very close and they're very tough to penetrate. Love to drive block. Brennan scrambling. And he's got that part of the game down. A good hook slide at the 30-yard line. And, and I wouldn't be surprised if John L. Smith at halftime said, look, Brian, if you're ever close to contact, take a dive. Because they've already lost high saw, and they certainly don't want to lose this talented redshirt freshman. But when you look at the quarterbacks for the University of Idaho, I mean, just over the years, you know, we talked at the top of the show about the great ones that have played and have play fake there. Yeah, you know, he's going to take it upfield himself. Okay, see the defender. I'm going to sit down. He's obviously been very well schooled, but the offense doesn't miss a beat. How much has the offense changed since Brian Brennan has been in there? Not a bit. They didn't throw up vertically much when he got in early, but they're running the football, they're play faking, they're still doing a lot of the same things they would normally do. And although he has thrown two interceptions, I mean, you got to give him at least that, but he's directed the offense very well here. Sheridan May... With a six-yard pickup, second down and four. The clock continues to roll. Nine and a half minutes left in the football game. Idaho on top, 33-15. Again, play action. Brennan flushed out, going for the corner. And incomplete. Andy Gilroy. Trying to sell that one to the official. Yeah, Gilroy uh, was trying to run under it. There was no way he was going to get there, so he leaned into the, into the defender. Troy Turner on the coverage. Take a look here on the left side of your screen. Again, you see the play fake. Deion Alexander almost gets to Brennan, but what a nice throw falling away. And as you said, you can see Gilroy trying to lean into the defender to try to get a, uh, a call. But he threw that ball about to 40 yards, falling back from it. There's Keith Neal. A knee injury has kept him out of the ball game today. Sheridan May cuts in, cuts out. And a nice tackle in the semi-open field by Dion Alexander. Although May, who is stretching for the first down, is very, very close. He has it, they'll move the sticks and start the clock. There's Eric Heisaw, his knee injury, just a bizarre injury. He was flushed out of the pocket, scrambling to his left, and it almost looked like his, a reaction when you pull a hamstring. He just went down. No one touched him. It didn't look like he stepped on anything. It just went right down. Jared in May. Alexander again catches him. See May not wanting to go out of bounds. The clock moving. Rich, when you look at Idaho's offensive front, how big they are. You have Eric Johnson. You were talking about the high saw there a few seconds ago, but he and Eric Johnson, the center on Idaho's uh, offensive front, were teammates at Cheney High School. But they're 270, the guards are 276 and 274, and the tackles are 300 and 279. And they drive block well, they pass protect well. Really a solid group. And that's why they have such good balance in their offense. Joel Thomas, if he can get through, he's got a lot of room, but that initial wave of 
blitzing linebackers hauls him down, Tim Scott at the bottom of the pile. Quick inside trap call. Idaho doing it many different ways. Straight ahead, quick traps, counter tray. Everything's working pretty well. You know, let's stop it right there. Watch number 67 on the screen right there. Look at the block right there and how that seal opens up. Let the running back go in this direction. See Joel Thomas following good. That was Jay Luke's number 67 for Idaho out of Littleton, Colorado. Three-year starter. Troy Turner on his way to the Eastern Washington sideline. Boy, it gets tough for Eastern Washington from here on out. Their schedule is murderous. It's the third rated, third rated schedule as far as difficulty goes. In one double A football, they travel to Northern Arizona. They travel to Idaho State, home for Montana State, a game which we'll have here on Prime Sports. Then they finish the season at Utah State, home against Boise State, and at Northern Iowa. It'll be interesting to see how Mike Kramer and his staff regroup this club for the, for the rest of the year. Brennan, Kyle Gary, Evan Brady brings him down. You know, Kyle Gary not only shows you that he's a good uh, you know, speed threat as a receiver, but a good possession receiver as well. He and Jason Anderson among the leaders nationally in pass receiving. You're going to have this play come right at you. You see Mike Hughes pull out in front, in front of uh, Brian Brennan. And you see that Gary goes up for the football. Make sure he takes care of it and gets the first down. Sixteen tackles for Evan Brady. Thomas inside the five. And Joel Thomas, the Vandals, content to run the clock, moving closer and closer. And a score here would obviously put it out of reach. With six and a half minutes left, 33-15, Idaho on top. The Vandals rated fourth in the nation. They'll play Montana State in the Kibbe Dome next week. Then they're home for Northern Arizona. And a big showdown in three weeks in Missoula against Montana. Second and goal. Sheridan May slips a tackle and then is corralled at the three. Craig Steinmetzer from his left tackle spot got in pretty quickly, but May broke the tackle off. And you need to remember, Rich, that uh, Eastern Washington was only allowing 49 yards a game rushing defense coming in. And we'll update you on Idaho's uh, rushing total here in a little bit. Career points, Sheridan May right now fourth. And a touchdown here would tie him with Kenny Gamble. Unless they let him kick the extra point, too. Brennan. And he won't get by Evan Brady. Flags go down. And it looks like a face mask. You know, Brennan had a straight arm on Evan Brady, and Brady went through the straight arm. Brady not happy, and he's being restrained by his teammates. Let's watch here as Brennan tries to start running the football. There you see the grab right there, and does take him down. see this <laughs> stiff arm and it was almost a double Personal face foul. mask because face Brennan mask. caught a little defense. bit of Brady but Brady's caught much more of Brennan's on the way down and it's a first down for the Vandals first and goal they'll mark it at the two and Sheridan May the lone setback May trying to spin into the end zone. He gets there. For the 56th time in his career, check it, 57th time in his career, Sheridan May 
has reached the end zone. He came in at 55, and he's got two today. And Idaho has put this one away. Ryan Wolverton for the extra points. It is good, and the Vandals with a commanding lead with five minutes and two seconds left in this football game. Sheridan May and the Vandals. A big day in the wheat fields of Eastern Washington. Morgan at the 20, going nowhere in a hurry. Sheridan May has tied Kenny Gamble now at 57. Foger is next. Lots of time on that drive. And the Vandals firing on all cylinders now. Todd Burnett in Eastern Washington. Four minutes and 55 seconds. Down in this football game, they need three touchdowns. Burnett to the sideline, Anderson the catch. I think Anderson was waiting to get hit by Cedric West. It never happened. Came down, wasn't sure where he was. Idaho just rushing their front four, dropping back in pass coverage. You can see that uh, Jason Anderson, I think, was racing for the hit, which never came. A gain of nine. Second and one movement on the inside. Uh, part of Eastern Washington's line. And Good ball, foul. looks like a procedure Full called TJ Ewing. Offense, five yard penalty. Moved. Ewing who moved from center to this uh, left guard position. Coming into this season, more of an impact player. One of the emotional leaders on that offensive front for Eastern Washington. Kind of, kind of a tough day today. Second down and six. Burnett wisely gets rid of it, and it will bring up third down. Rich, I've been very impressed with this Idaho defense today, especially here in the second half really snuffed the run. As you can see it there, 188 to 211. And uh, Eastern Washington only allowing 49 yards a game coming into this one. And Idaho will be the team that uh, moves up in the rushing defense stats this week in one double one football. The Vandals, very impressive on the road. Burnett on third down and six. Incomplete, in and out of the hands of Jeff Hill. And the Eagles will be forced to punt. Idaho coming with a full blitz, six players. Eastern Washington picks it up. And you can see they're thrown right into coverage. Jeff Hill can't hang on. Kyle Gary is back. Tom Zerflu is in. It's a short snap and a pass. Torrey Smith to Antonio Morgan. And the fake punt works. Eastern Washington will hold on to the football. Torrey Smith, as you know, backup quarterback, lining up in short formation. He has been in punt formation for Eastern Washington the entire game. And I watched Eastern Washington practice this a little bit yesterday. A little bit of life. Torrey Smith with a Nice completion. See, see 10 there in the middle of your screen, the up back. Now he just hangs it out for one of his receivers. Actually, it's it's not defended that bad. You could see that uh, Idaho was somewhat fooled by it, but at least they had a man in the area. Now Burnett for the shotgun. Jesse Hartz can't hold on. Tommy connects with the coverage. Second down and 10, 3.43 left. Idaho on top, 40 to 15. Yeah. 
There's a look at Harold Fox, one of the offensive linemen for the Eagles. Burnett for Anderson incomplete. Good defense by Jeff Hill, who came over and got a hand on that pass. And it's third down and 10. There's a flag down at the 37-yard line. Face mask. Defense. Idaho will get tabbed with a face mask. It will give Eastern Washington a first down. It obviously would be an emotional boost for Eastern Washington to get on the scoreboard. Well, you still want to continue to run your offense, even though things have not been going well. You want to try to get something positive late in the game or in the second half, at least. Gerald Jackson in motion. Here comes the blitz. Burnett gets away. And the pass is incomplete. No flag. It was intended for David Lewis. I thought either Duke Garrett or Tommy Connect had Todd Burnett on that play, but they like blocked each other. You see that once in a while in football. Burnett had nobody back there with him. Watch what happens here. You can see here comes the pressure and boom. Oh, good block by Tommy. Wow, they'll talk about that one in film this next week. I think that probably should have been an interference call. <laughs> Just in looking at the film again. It was Ryan Phillips, the defensive end, who was back in coverage. In and out of the hands of Jackson. That ball thrown behind him, and it's fourth down and five now. For Todd Burnett in Eastern Washington. A little bit of frustration there with Harold Fox. The right guard, and you can see that Todd Burnett is He's a very not, unhappy yeah, guy. Yeah. Very frustrating day. Torsey Smith in the shotgun. So on fourth down and five, Smith has replaced Burnett. Torsey over the middle, and he finds his man. Gerald Jackson making the catch. And let's see if Eastern Washington stays with Torsey Smith. He's a little more mobile than Burnett. Looks like he will stay in. Three minutes, 10 seconds left. Idaho on top, 40 to 15. Here comes the blitz. Smith towards Hart, and it's intercepted. Jeff Hill for Idaho with the football. And Hill knocked out of bounds. Flags go down. And it's all come apart at the seams for Eastern Washington. The flag dropped to the 24 came after the interception on the return. So Idaho will hold on to the ball. It's a block below the knees on the return. And it'll back the football up close to the Idaho goal. And Mike Kramer in Easter Washington will fall to two and three on the season. One and two in the conference. On the return. A block below but you have to be impressed again with the second distance. half that Idaho has put together in this ball game. Last week against Idaho State, they scored 35 second half points. And a couple of weeks before that against Stephen F. Austin put up 51 points in the second half. So uh, the Vandals certainly a, a, a club that can score a lot very quickly and did so again today. Timeout on the field. Idaho leads Eastern on Prime Sports. Not so, so impressive today. Hands off. Joel Thomas is out to the 18-yard line, and the Vandals content to keep it on the ground. They'll run some clock. Eastern Washington will call a timeout. 
So the Eagles want the football back. The Governor's Cup. It all started uh, with Eastern Washington going up to a, set, a six to nothing lead. Tory Smith, Torsey Smith with a three yard run to make it uh, six nothing. Eastern Washington on top. Jesse Hart then with a 27 yard catch. The Eagles who missed their first extra point kick went for two and did not make it and led Idaho by a score of 12 to nothing. Ryan Wolverton connected from 27 yards. He missed three field goals. In that first half, Sheridan May then carried it in, and that was our halftime score. Eastern Washington on top of Idaho, 12 to 10. But after that, it was all Idaho. Joel Thomas going in from one yard out. Eastern got three back on the Zerflu field goal, making it 16 to 15. A 100-yard kickoff return for a touchdown on the ensuing kickoff by Montrell Williams. That made it Idaho 23, Eastern Washington 15. Thomas makes it close to the first down. That ended the scoring in the third quarter. In the fourth quarter, though, the Vandals continued to rock and roll. Wolverton hit a 22-yarder, making it 26-15. Kyle Gary with a 52-yard catch from Brian Brennan to make it 33 to 15. And Sheridan May for the 57th time in his illustrious career got into the end zone. And that's how we've arrived at 40 to 15. Idaho on top of Eastern Washington. Mike Kramer and the Eagles calling another timeout. Two and a half minutes left in this ball game. A lot of expectations coming into this game for Coach Mike Kramer to take a look at John L. Smith. And it's been a tough week in the Vandal camp, and certainly I'm, I'm certain that they're happy with the outcome of this ball game, but uh, had to fight through some, some key injuries to some key personnel and have really had a good game, especially in the second half. And the Vandals in their next five football games, four of them in the friendly confines of the Kibbe Dome. Thomas to the 30. Eastern has one timeout left. They'll use it. And it will be second down and three down for the Idaho Vandals. Second half possessions. Not bad. And maybe it took two or three series for Brian Brennan to feel comfortable in the offense. Yeah, and one series you see was just one play and out. It was a long interception. As you mentioned at the time, it was as good as a punt. But pretty impressive. Touchdown, kickoff return, touchdown, a field goal, two more touchdowns. And, you know, we, we talked about uh, Idaho establishing the run today against a, a really solid defensive front from Eastern Washington, but... The Idaho offensive line has really dominated that front today. Jim Mills, Jay Lukes, Eric Johnson, Mike Hughes, Spencer Folau. The Vandals were touched a little bit by the flu coming into the ball game also. Yeah, flu was a problem with, with a few of their players. Some injuries and in, uh, on defense too. Josh Fetter, little linebacker, out for a while with some broken ribs. Dave Longoria stepped in there. And fighting through adversity. That's what good teams will do. And certainly Idaho's done that today. Thomas wrapped up by Jason Martin. He has a first down that will stop the clock, move the chains, and Idaho, Idaho can basically run the clock out now. Two minutes left in this football game, the Governor's Cup, which I'm sure there's a spot down in the trophy case down in uh, Moscow, Idaho, that's got a big dust ring around it because it's been there for a while. We'll return to the campus of the University of Idaho. On the carry for the Vandals, Grover Johnson. 
Rob Arano coming up with a stop. As you mentioned, the Vandals will let the play clock go down to a few seconds and snap it, but only probably have to run a couple more plays. Idaho goes home, as you mentioned, Rich, for four of their next five. The one game in there that uh, they will be on the road for will be a key game in the conference title chase at Montana on October 29th. They'll return home for Montana State and Northern Arizona in the next couple of weeks, then go to Montana, and then at home again against Northern Iowa and Weber State. And they've got a chance also to move up in the polls as Gary Peters, the referee, is on his way to talk to Mike Kramer. There's a, a, a problem right now with the play clock. The Vandals want to run some of that clock. Peters trying to... Reset the clock at 121. Ah, 10 seconds have escaped from the game clock. 25 second clock operator did not start the clock on time which was caused by a problem with a 25 second clock. I knew it. So they had 10 more seconds on. Well, the Vandals at fourth in the nation, Arnie, they have an opportunity, obviously, with a, an impressive win on the road of, of 40 to 15 to move up even higher, depending on what happens above them. That, I think, sets up the real showdown of the year in three weeks in Missoula, because Montana right now is number two in the nation. You could theoretically see a game against number one and number two in the nation on that Saturday in Missoula. Quite possibly it happened uh, a few years ago with Northern Iowa and Idaho when Northern Iowa was number one and Idaho was number two. Grover Johnson. There's your one double-A pole, Marshall and Youngstown State. Youngstown State today playing the uh, defending Division II national champions, North Alabama. Big Sky always well represented in the one double-A football pole. Third down and 15, this will be, and I promise you, this will be the last play of this football game. Brennan will hand it to Grover Johnson. Grover Johnson out close to the 35-yard line, and that'll do it. The Governor's Cup belongs to the Idaho Vandals. They move their record to 5-0, and and the young freshman, Brian Brennan, has presented another win for John L. Smith. Smith and Kramer at midfield. They're pretty good friends. Idaho is 5-0. and oh, Eastern Washington is 2-3. and three. We'll return to Cheney, Washington after a timeout on Prime Sports Northwest. He has led or shared the team lead in tackles in every game this season. Saturday against UCLA, sophomore free safety Lawyer Malloy led the team with 13 tackles, six of those on assisted efforts. A local player from Tacoma's Lincoln High School, Lawyer's ability to prevent the big play is a big part of this season's success. Lawyer Malloy, the Money Store's Husky Player of the Week. Your final score here today, the Idaho Vandals beat the Eastern Washington Eagles by a score of 40 to 15. Hi everybody, Rich Waltz back with Arnie Scalio. Uh, some surprises, obviously, Eastern Washington jumps out to the lead, but I was surprised at how Idaho regrouped with their redshirt freshman quarterback, Brian Brennan, came back, got close near the second half, and dominated the second half. Well, it just goes to show you in Idaho's system how, how they prepare their players. I mean, it, they, they missed a little bit early on, and all of a sudden, Brennan stepped in and did really an outstanding job. But Idaho's offensive front and their running game was just outstanding, played solid defense, especially in the second half, really good second half for them. And especially in the second half, the play of Kyle Gary was very, very important. Uh, Gary, a big part of the, this 
vandal attack, and here was his big 52-yard touchdown catch. And watch the block right there, and you can see that Gary is uh, up the sideline easily, and that really broke the game open for the Idaho Vandals. But certainly, that receiver has had uh, an excellent year and has a long way to go this season, one of the best in 1AA football. Well, Gary on the receiving end of passes from this man, Brian Brennan, taking over for Eric Heisaw, who had the fluke knee injury early. He did throw two interceptions, but he does throw a touchdown and 237 yards. I would expect a big sigh of relief from John L. Smith after he has seen the performance of Mr. Brennan. Well, just a great day, and you know, there's a lot of football left to go in this uh, second half of this football season. Brian Brennan is right there. Good game experience, and uh, obviously he's going to be a big key in the Vandal offense the rest of the way. West One Bank will make a donation on Brennan's behalf to the University of Idaho. West One Bank, it's not just about money. All right, Eastern Washington now at two and three. They are one and two in the conference. The Vandals, fourth in the nation. They go to five and zero. Oh. They're two and zero oh in the conference. How nice is it to go back home for four of your next five? Well, I think it's very important. Idaho obviously has a tough early season schedule. They're through that, as you mentioned, home for two straight weeks, then to Montana, then two more weeks back at home. So the schedule favors Idaho in the stretch run. The schedule for us in a couple of weeks, we'll head south down to Ogden, Utah. The next time you'll see Big Sky Football live on Prime Sports Northwest, Dave Dickinson and the Montana Grizzlies pay a visit on the Weber State Wildcats. It's Saturday, October 22nd. Hope you'll join us live, 11 o'clock Pacific, 12 o'clock Mountain. Up next, Pac-10 preview as they get set to kick it off between USC and Oregon State. The final score of this Governor's Cup from Cheney, Washington. The Idaho Vandals beat the Eagles by a score of 40 to 15. For our producer, Bill Cooper, for Ari Scalio, I'm Rich Waltz. Good afternoon and goodbye from Eastern Washington.